This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is an online mentoring program that teaches people with no experience how to create a real profitable online business and e-commerce. I have been working with Ryan at Change for a few years now and attended many events and got to meet the amazing community of like-minded people. These guys are the best of the best. The support these guys offer is personal, no bots or employees, there's no experience needed, but like anything in life, it takes time as it's a real business with real results. For more information, go check out Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help build a successful business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. So everyone called debt collectors bullies this. St- Mate, I've never bullied no one in my life. That didn't need fucking bullying. They're shooting at my house, I'm shooting at their house. They're burning mine, I'm burning theirs. I don't like the police. The police have lost control of the city. They haven't got a clue. You go around Liverpool in your car, you don't see fucking police. You don't see them. City centre, you know. Come out of the city centre, you won't see no police. And he thrown the fucking two of them on him, James. I've never heard screams like it in my fucking life, mate. Things on the site, Sean killed them. Sean thrown them out the window. Celebrities. Let me tell you about celebrities. It's, it's fucking stupid, mate. My head's been fucked up for years. I'm all right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am so mad here. Ben, we're on. We're on that tip, are you? Nice to meet you, James. Good to see you. Finally, after speaking for yeah. a year or two, yeah. The man, the myth, the legend, yeah. debt collector, Liverpool, in and out of prisons. Aye, Your aye. stuff's been viewed hundreds of millions of times. For the last five years since I've started this podcast, your name has always been at the forefront to have on. First and foremost, yeah, thank how are you. you? Thank you, it's good, it's good. It's yeah. Good. Well, I always promise you I'll do it with you first anyway. You know, I don't know if you all want me mad, but... I said, the man, if you do it, we'll do it. And it's it's mad the way it fell in here because I had my uh, I had my honeymoon here because I was on license. I couldn't go out to country, so we picked Glasgow. So now I'm here this weekend. It's my anniversary on Monday, so it's all Aligned. fitted in really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all fitted in really good. Yeah. Like, so yeah, it's all good. And shout out to Matt straight away, good guy. Yeah, Matt's straight a good, good guy. Mate. Yeah, yeah. It's a good guy. But before we get into everything, Sean, I always like to go back to the start of my guests. Get a bit of yeah, understanding course, course. about you, where you grew up and how it all began. Uh, well, we was born in the Four Squares and Great Holmes Street, and then we lived in Kirkdale, Kirkdale area. Um, so it was like, you got Kirkdale, Kirkdale, Anfield, Walton, you got all them areas, and they're all very compact. Um, and I've got like... Four brothers. My dad was a doorman. Always worked all his life. My mum's always worked. We've all worked. My mum's worked all her life. And then I got in with a few people. Like, you know, I was always tired. I was always busy. And I can't sit round. I'm just one of them people. I just, I like to be doing something. You know, uh, I wake up every morning, half four, quarter to five. Got a little cup of tea and a little a yogurt or something. Um, anyway, um, I knew two guys it was like I call gangster guys it was like look I hate that way of fucking gangster and even getting called you scary, scary stack collector it's fucking pathetic <laughs> it should have been <laughs> when we was doing it it should be in the UK mediator We've got a mediator between everyone and getting called like, it's caused me problems people go oh what do you think you're I'm like mate look I, you know when you try and explain to people when people go 
why do you think you're a fucking R case? So I'll go, you're a fucking R, mate. Yeah, why? So it does your head in a little bit. So anyway, I've met these two guys. Uh, I knew a guy who had a, a club and that. And we thought I could have a little go on. It was a bit handy and a little bit cheeky. And he had pubs paying me protection on the road. Um, do you want to come on a few debts with us? You know, you can have a little go on all that. I went to, uh, yeah, yeah, what have I got to do? I haven't got to do nothing. They're going to knock on the door. I remember if it's going tits up, if it goes off, it goes off. If we get enough and we go, you know what? Be luck at each other. You're going to be standing behind us too. Let's go and have a cup of tea. We're going to stand aside. You're going to run in and try and clump and put them out. How old are you going to be? I'm like fucking 16 then, you know what I mean? He went, does age matter? It's a body, arms, legs, all right. Anyway, I've started doing a debt to them, started to get a better name for myself. Yeah. Uh, and then doors come up. Do you fancy doing a bit of security? Because look, in life, it's easy to hurt someone. In life, it's hard to, to protect yourself and protect other people. Anyone can get hurt. I can go out of here and now there can be three or four fellas smash me fucking head in. It can happen in your flat. People come in and do your thing. You protect yourself and put all your protection. It costs money and you've got to have good people around you. And I was, um, I just think you were fucked then. So, you know, people want your services. Sean, will you do this door? Will you do that? Hey, will you go and see him? Will you go and collect this? And the two guys I was working with doing debts, they was a lot older. Uh, one had just done, one had come out doing life. He'd done life. Uh, and then he got another nine years for taking a fella's eye out on a bus, a uh, bus stop. Uh, and then when he's gone in, I'm left with this other guy to do the debts here. And I just changed the whole perspective of doing debts. But look, why are we doing this? Why don't we do it this way? Um, they was always taking pictures of them, getting up where they live. So it become good to it. And I thought, well, why am I doing it with them? I might as well fucking do it myself. I've got all the lads. They're getting a bit older. I'm a bit younger. You take over everything, don't we? We all get old, mate. We all crumble. I uh, started to do my own debts. My name started getting out there. Um, I had a couple of pubs on my own road, which the oak, which we I still had, even when I come out of jail, the old oak. Natalie. Um, I thought, yeah, this, 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 this is good. This is all right. Then I started on the scaffolding, because I'm a scaffolder by trade. Uh, so I was doing the scaffolding, debts, running the bar. I never drank. I didn't. You ask anyone, and any doorman out there will tell you, no one's ever seen me drinking or smoking until I was 38. Why not? You, you, you know what? I was... I know it sounds man I was that fucking busy. And they had lads around me. And I was on my toes all the time. And, you know, I wore a bulletproof vest for fucking there two and a half years. Because I'll, I'll get into that, a loads of trouble we had. So because they had lads, and look, don't forget, I was only a young kid. So no one's going to give me doors. So when a pub had a problem or a door had a problem, I'd just go in and see them. And they'd be like, really? I went, give me a chance. You need door money. You've got fucking problems. And I'd go in and then I'd be hitting a few and I'm, I'm falling out with heads and people every year. But I'm one of, look, I'm no fucking Johnny Concrete, me, mate. But I'll stand up for what I believe in. I've got a fucking big heart. So I'm like fucking 17, 18, knocking grown men out. And then me dad turning around and saying to me, have you been a fucking bad such a bad? My fucking mate was on there, I know him. And I'd be knocking these older guys out. So it just... It just screwed them fast. So because it was always busy and I only took, people only give me the shit. I couldn't get a good tour. They'd only give me the shit. So I couldn't afford to be having a bit. No one's ever seen me. I'd like anyone to say they've seen me around Liverpool, bladdered, off me head drinking. Never, never me. And I've, I, no one's ever seen me that. I used to call me Father Ted on the clubs. <laughs> Honestly, used to call me Father Ted. Um, so I didn't drink. I didn't smoke, it was doors, doors, debts, debts, scaffolding, scaffolding, busy, 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 house. Look, I'm a family man, I've got five girls down me. What was it like? What were you like at school? Did you always have that size, that presence? Oh, I was a little fucker. Where did you? So school. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck all change then, Sean. <laughs> school, so we moved from Great Overstreet and we go to Lambeth Road, school. 
And I'm still in touch with a, a good few lads from Lambeth Road. Chris Murphy is one of my real good long-time mates. Box for England and everything. Great fella. Yeah. So we're landing this Lambie Road, this Lambie Road school. 1,100 kids in here. I'm only... How old are you when you go see? 12, 11, 12, something like that. And my brother's in a bigger year. So I've landed in the school. I'm like, fucking hell. You know, you don't need a kid, aren't you? And the fucking school was massive. So I got on with the gym teacher yeah? and the French teacher. Yeah? All the others who just didn't get on with. I'm, I'm not a sheep, I'm a shepherd. I ain't getting told what to do. If it's going to be constructive and it can get me further in life, yeah, it will, but I didn't see education then as being that. I'm fucking taking me, mate. I have people typing for me, and, and but I'm good at organising things and, you know. Um, so anyway, I've gone to school and it's all good. Everyone has their else gaps in the fights. So there's the school. Here's my house, there's one field. We had a mobile shop and another shop. I'd walk over every morning at 20 past nine. I'd be late every morning. I could get in my in my wind in, in, in my house. There'd be an M10 or M9, and I'd shoot an air rifle at the windows, pinging the kids in the school. That I'm coming in now. I could actually hit the school windows with this air rifle. Anyway, I was late all the time. So one day, when it all changed, school, school, you're all fighting and doing your own thing. So we're in the um, not the hall before you go in, and it's like terms closing. And he went, oh, we've got an award here that we've never given out before in the history of the school. Like, and we're all, no, I'm not taking no notice. I've got me wedge on, me drain pipe, me ox. I'm thinking I'm fucking dead smart. Yeah. And can we have Sean Smith up? And they've all gone, oh, I've gone, oh, fucking I'm getting from here. <laughs> I was like all made up. Now there's 11 of the kids in that school. It's fucking massive. We have not we have an award, the school's never given out before, blah, blah, blah. Can we have them up at the stage? So I've walked down. I'm in the second year now. I've walked down in front of all the school. And they had a wooden clock with 20 past nine on it. And they went, we're going to give this to Sean. You all see him every morning, walking across the field, coming in, like he hasn't got a care in the world, and we're going to give him this award. But I went, fucking bright red. They made the come time we have in front of the school. They went, hopefully next year, he'll see a little bit of sense and we can get him up here and give him another clock and have him in for that past eight quarter to nine like everyone else. This is on the assembly. And I thought, you fucking... I just felt a gun. I thought, you fucking cheeky bastards. All me mates, you know, I'm a little scally and my brother's in uh, uh, all the year. And uh, I just went on full hate for the school. So that year's finished and we go back. I'm still not going in early. Um, so I got expelled three times, bought the governors a couple of times. So years ago when they give you the cane, they can't put the, they're not supposed to put their hand over their head. And people know there was a teacher called Mr. Hodgson, Mr. Whippy and Mr. Patterson. Mr. Whippy was the deputy head, Mr. Patterson was the head, Mr. Hodgson was, I think he was Matt in English, big, big cunt. Sure, he was fucking Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think he was. <laughs> I'd like to someone to confirm that. Anyway, uh, I'm a little fucker, blah, blah, blah. So I'm always getting the cane. I'm always outside. Just just being naughty. But I didn't want to do nothing now. I thought, you're amazing to come to me. I'm not arty. Jim Cheetah, Mr. Jackson, fucking loved them. Mr. Hunter, the French CJ, loved him. I come, I come top in French. I can't fucking... I can speak a couple of words, but I like them. So if I like someone, I'll I'll bond with them. You know what? And he just had this, I thought he was just against me. So anyway, I'm getting the K one day off this, Mr. Ogsonson. He takes me down to Mr. Whippy and they give you 10 on your fingers. And I don't give a fuck who you are, mate. Everyone gets these off the cane. You can't take kids now. Should bring it back. Anyway, I'm getting 10, five on each arm. So he took me in this room next to Mr. Whippy's office. Get your hand up, Smith. So it was only me and him. I've had me bollocking off the tip of the head. Mr. Ogden took me in this room and he's giving me the cane. So he, his hand is going, I'm like, I want to say, well, what are you doing? You know, he's fucking like this, Mr. Ogden. Anyway, he's giving me 10 and I've gone, uh, you fucking tears rolling down my eyes. And he went, I hope you've learned your lesson, boy. This will get harder. I've been expelled a couple of times. And I went, 
No, you can't breathe. You've got that stutter as a kid. I tried to be brave. How many did you give me when? Ten. I went, no, you'd only give me eight. And I put my hand out, no, being cheeky. And he's just gone, fuck off. And whack me arm. But I just seen Rez. I picked the chair up. I'm so not at the yeah. He's ran out, locked me in this M10, gets the headmaster, ring with me dad. My dad was on the fruit market, he's standing at a shop, he's worked all his life. My dad would go to work like one or two in the morning. I'd come in at one or two in the afternoon. So I thought, get me, man. Don't fucking ring the house, dad. Don't. No one's mobile then, don't get me, dad. My fucking dad comes over with his CP on, cap on. I'm in this room. Team coming in, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so he speaks to me, dad, and he called me in. So my dad's standing there, staring at me with his cap on. This big CP on. If you see it now, we tell you, we laugh about it now. And he went, you don't fucking get me, you. And this Mr. Pass went, Mr. Smith, I'm the headmaster, Mr. Whippy's deputy. You have been a, in the cheating fraternity for 40 something years, and I have never ever felt like punching a pupil. But your son just does something to me in this school. I was standing there going, fucking hell, he went, I, I, I can't look at him. Take him out. And he's like, oh, I, don't worry about that. Never mind the cane. I'm just explaining the cane. So outside was a fucking big trophy cabinet. But everyone's trophies are there. No, them little cabinets where you can just turn it. And it's all glass. So he's like, get out there while I speak to him. What do you, do you want to expel me again? My dad say, no, leave him in. So I can hear him speaking to me. Dad. He's this, he's that, he's tolerant, he's the one who do this. So I'm standing there. So I've opened the cabinet and pulled the shelves right on the edge. The way they're just sitting on them prongs. I've just pulled the shelves right on the edge like that. And I've left the glass open there. It's a double cabinet, the glass open there. He went, OK, Mr. Pat, OK, I'll see them. He went, fucking get on you. He went, fucking get it on. As I turned around, he's giving me a clip to the back of the head. And then I'm going, who'd be? I could hear, I'm just going to, where the, where the, the headmaster thing was, here's the stairs. Who'd be with this cabinet? And I'm walking down. And just as he opened the door, he just heard, Kush! fucking everything go, mate. Now Mr. Passes had gone to close the cabinets, tried to push it back and everything, full of glass. So I was fucking made up. I went home and I got a fucking bad hiding. A, a proper good hiding. Um, and I thought, I'll have to get my head down into school. So, go back into school. I'm suspended for like, seven days or a week or something. I think it's a week. Go back into school. And I'm called up again in front of all the school. Just to let everyone know, you see Sean out. It's very long school, Lambert Road. It's like the biggest playground in the Northwest or something. And I'm always outside, M10, M9, or what's 3i. Um, Sean's always out, please no one, because we used to have a little thing, SRS on our hands, school riot squad. So I had a few little mates, so I was in Wood's work, I'd be cutting everyone's fucking work up. It metal work, but I just I just didn't want to be there. Do you know what I, mean? I really just didn't want to be there. Um, so, so they called me up and embarrassed me. I thought, hey, fuck it. So in Lambert Road School, there's a big stage, and we had a mobile. So all the papers that you don't sell, you send back. So I get up one morning, and I just dread, I'm in third year now, just dreading going to fucking school. I went, hey, fuck it, I know what. They call me up against coming to the end of the year. I've sneaked in the school, caretakers are in, got in, got a load of papers, put them all under the stage, <laughs> lit it. The stage is dead, I close the doors, comes out, what were you doing at the end of the year, isn't it? Assembly and all that. So all the teachers up, you can just see the smoke. You know, come on out. And everyone's going, <laughs> no one look at that. I'm going, bring your back on, screw up. I didn't think when they open the door, you just get a, Pfft. you get that, like, backdraft or something, don't you? I, I, I no one panic, no one panic. If there's a bit of smoke, they've opened the door, you can... They were in a bit, which is like a little swoosh in the smoke. Anyway, all the alarms have gone off. They've got, a, they've got everyone out in the yard. Fire brigades are there. The police are called in. 
they had me in sitting with the police and I got fucked off for tears, yeah. And they had to go to a, a private school in Penman Street. They wouldn't have me no more. They couldn't prove it. And years ago, you got a, you got a caution off the police. They wanted to just give me the caution. Yeah, that's it, I've had enough. So I went to this private school, like for naughty kids. Fucking hell, mate, I thought I was naughty. These was fucking ruthless. Gone in, first day, fella had a mod bike with all the mirrors on, bit of a teacher, wearing a normal gear, no pants and shirt and all that. Right, young Smith, caught in trouble in your school. School can't reprimand you there. We can do what the fuck we want with you. And you want to learn the hard way, you'll get it every day. I went, well, well, all right, come on, I forgot it, give us a pencil, give us a book. I'm telling you, any of you, listen, you don't know what you'll get here. And some of the other kids go, yeah, whatever, give it to them, say it, and all like that. I was there three days, and all he ever went on, went on about was these fish in his fucking tank. He had all tropical fish. And I just didn't like him, little fat stocky fella, he was horrible. And he had that stupid fucking Vespa bike with all the mirrors on. And he's giving me a hard time. So little Sid is what you used to get in school. You can put them in and get it on the bike. I've got in the yard, started to smoke the bike, and fucking drove it into school. All his mirrors coming off me, he was fucking murder. <laughs> so they get me, they get the police. I have my second caution, the third when you get prosecuted. I'm back in the school and he's, I've come out of it and I've got in this other class. So we went over to a little shop, Blackie's over the road. I bought a load of sherbet. And anyone who's fish lovers, I was a naive kid, I filled the fish tank up with um, loads of sherbet, pink, yellow, green sherbet, and killed all his, killed all his fish. <laughs> Maybe that was it. But <laughs> they just fucked me off. I had to have private to it since she got fucked off. So... I'm 14, 15, I'm running the mobile for me dad. This private tutor's come and be fucked there off. Me dad's got a shop. Um, and then I started. That was that. With the two older guys, doors, security. Uh, and it just grew. And then when I got like proper doors, when the breweries got to notice me, as in with my mate called Darren Lange, he started at the doors with me. And you just got to shit, mate. They just give you shit. I was up in Speak, Canny Farm, Crocky, which no one would do. But I'm I'm a young kid, I'm doing my own bit of doors. I'm getting off for three pubs. Yeah, I'll take them. What can I make? The biggest mistake you ever made. Were you buzzing through it? Was that an adrenaline rush? Yeah, yeah. yeah but... there and going to people's doors. Look, I'm one of these. If I've got a problem with you and anyone will tell you, I'm not ringing up and doing all that shit on the phone. No one had mobiles then when I was a kid. I think they come out maybe when I was 18. I don't know what fucking year it was. So you'd have to go knock on someone's door. So if I had people kicking off in the bar and trying to smash, where is he? Do you work for Sean Smith? You're a fucking divvy. I just, who is he? Do you know where he is? Not on your normal phone, knocking on doors. I'd go knock on the door. You're in my fucking bar kicking off last night in the club. I don't own the club, mate. You call on the door, my mum puts you going to shoot them. And I'll shoot in my way for you. Well, I'm here. And everyone knew me as just one of them people. Have you had a problem with you? Don't ring, don't ring up or ring the bar or throw something through the bar or shoot the fucking bar. Come and see me. And then my name just went better and better. And then Dad left. They had another couple of good lads with me. I had Alex from over the water. He stayed with me. He was the best man for me wedding. Yeah, uh, he'd been very loyal. I've had some good doormen. But look, when I was busy, when I was when I was busy, we were the second second biggest door company in Liverpool. Eighty odd lads, twenty odd women, clubs, bars, sites. It was just fucking mayhem, mate. Eighties, nineties was mayhem. How much of a sore head was it though? Having so many doormen, was it constant threats? Or because your name was behind it, it wasn't as much. You know what? It, it you know people go on about mental health and all that shit. I used to have three phones. So one was for doors, one was for sites, and one was a person. Three fucking phones, mate. And I'm like, I had that many, but I had them not just in the city centre. I had them out the city centre. I had them in witness. I had, and I had one in Wellington then, even before I'd come to Wellington. So I was everywhere. 
Look, I didn't want to have a drink and I didn't want to socialise, but I couldn't because I just had shite. The doors he had was shite. And even when I started getting the big bars in Liverpool, oh, sure, I'm having problems with these doors, I won't go and uh, to charge an extra to put in buckets on. Will you come and see what you can do? And I'm not going to go down and start knocking doors on out. I'd just give it this. Lads, listen, they don't want you. Simple as that. I'm taking over the door. You're going to work for me. You're going to get the same money, but you're not staying and you're not staying. Why? Because you're a prick, mate. You're charging fucking next to you. are putting buckets on the door. At Christmas, yeah, it was allowed. Fucking weekends. You're taking a piss, mate. You're ruining the bar. And then your mates into an all graft. Ain't happening. And anyone will tell you that in Liverpool. Anyone. Some doors, some lads would say, well, if you fucking want it, let's have it. And I'd end up scrapping over to have a little scrap at the door. I'd, look, I've been done any few times, mate, but never by one person. Never in my fucking life. And anyone will tell you that. And he ended up at the door, so the breweries get to know you. Oh, we've got problems in that one, given that. But I just got this shit, James, for years. And then when I got established, I was all right. Then we had a big war that started. Not letting drug dealers in the club. That was a fucking headache. Because, when was it, late 80s, early 90s, all them tablets come out, ears of gold, and, mate, it was fucking mayhem. But when they're in, you, got, you didn't get problems, because everyone's off the head, dancer. When cocaine started in Liverpool, woof, that's when it started. Is that how you in, ended up involved in a drug war, even though you weren't even selling craft? Because you weren't <sighs> wanting anybody to sell it? No, no. Most of me were, most most of the troubles I had on the doors, I sorted out with the doors. I had good doorman around me, real good doorman. Too many to mention. One, Paul Walsh, still me mate today. Look, I had 30, 40, 60, 70 doormen. I've probably got five of them doormen to speak to now. Bristol was brilliant. Walsh, he fucking lunatic. He's my best mate now. Alex is my best mate. They all went. They're all standing here when I'm backing the trouble up. Once I've gone, they don't want to know. They just, they all wanted the money. And yeah, a lot of them did stand by me and a lot of them did help me. Some of them got jail. And I've lost track with a few of them. And I'd say out of all of them, I've probably got about six or seven of them. I'd still call two friends. Even some of them I haven't spoke to for a few years. Um, and that's how all my shit started. Because I wouldn't let no drug dealers in. Because that's what the brewery wanted us for. Sean, look. The license had come in and put, and put a, a booker in. The licensee had the key and the police had a key for drugs. If there's too many drugs in the box, you got a drug problem. If there's not enough drugs in the box, there's someone selling. So it's a very, very fine line. So the proper managed ones like Bass and all the breweries, all their managers were strict as fuck. No one to go in that box. The police had the key. The managers never go in it. So they come in and get into drugs. Sure, and I've got a drug problem. So I go in. <clears throat> got cameras now. So I'd have a couple of little spies and go around and see what you can buy. They go around, mate, you got five, you got ten, you got beak. It was mostly tablets. But when beak hit it, that's when you got your problems. Kids coming in, hiya, mate, how are you? Two hours later, you're looking at that. I'll get your shot. I'll get your man's shot. And it just started from there, James. It just went mad. And I did have good dorm around me. And if, if there was ever a problem, there's probably only me and another big security company in Liverpool. And he knows who he is, there's only one. And there's probably only me and him that would front all our trouble. If our lads was in trouble, I'd go and front it. And so would this other guy. And everyone knows who he is. He hasn't done any deeds or goals on that. He's a boss fella. There's probably us out of the door companies that would front people. And that's how I got good lads. Oh, fuck that, mate. If there's shit at your house or if the shit goes to your house from the door, Sean will be there. I'll be sitting in my fucking doorman's house. With the... Sean's not going to shoot me out, so I go and stay there. I go and park up and wait for them. So I was loyal. I am a loyal person. Anyone will fucking tell you that. Uh, and then all the shit I had, which is well documented, and, um, you know, the Echo, Vice, uh, the YouTube, the... Uh, Netflix. That weren't my trouble, James. None of that trouble was mine. How far did that go, all that? Two years, two years plus. There was nothing to do with me. I'm running two big mass nightclubs in Liverpool. One of them, massive club. I'm running that. 
I comes home on Sunday. Uh, goes to bed, get hears a commotion, all my windows are done in. Looks at a video, sees who it is, rings them. What's going on, mate? Fucking hell, you're coming, mate, pup. It's not you. Someone's that close to you. All right, I've rang this friend at the time. I won't mention your name, but everyone will know who it is. What's going on? You went, oh, I had a bit of trouble last night. I said, well, don't you think you should fucking tell me? Because I know you really well, and I'm connected to you. To come and fucking done my house. Don't you think you should tell me? Ah, it'll be sorted. So I've rang this little firm, and they had to want to straighten it with that person. And I don't want to say anything, because it's embarrassed enough anyway. Um, and he wouldn't have a straightener. So because this guy was very close to me and connected to me, he wouldn't have a straightener. So he looks bad. We look bad. My fame looks bad. And these kids just didn't give a fuck, mate. They ran right with us. They were shooting at us, ramming the cars. They fuck burnt my body. But I had to take... I had to get the, the reins and I had... Sean sort that, Sean sort this, get lads for this. Sean, get lads for that. But when they're attacking your beard, he's fucking sitting there, what are you going to do? You're going to defend yourself. I said, look, this is not my fucking problem. But I took the brunt of it. End up going fucking mental, sleeping on me couch, wearing a vest, changing me cars, putting me cars down the corner, carrying a gun permanently all the time with me, a little derringer, putting it in the thing of your car, your ETM, in me undies, in my briefcase. Yeah, James, it was fucking, it was mental, mate. It, it just went a life. And you know when you... A lot of people don't understand. You know when you get a bit of a temper, you get a bit red-faced. My face was permanently fucking red and burning all the time. And it was... Anyway, I've had these three phones. One phone put down. Goes and sees the doctor. We're going to put you on Panadol Sertaline. One's a Peter Block that wants to carry me down. So he said, have you ever thought about seeing a psychiatrist? I'm like, oh, fuck off. He said, why don't you go and see one? Here's a private one in Rodney Street. So here's where it gets funny. So I go to see this fella sitting on the street, third floor. Goes and sees this guy in a room like this. Sees this guy in his own face, called Peter. Right, Sean, how are you? What you do? I don't know. She goes, she come, we got a bit of problems, all this and that. Yeah. Right, Sean, I can see you have three phones, so what, can you turn them all off now? No, no. She said, well, that's one of your problems. I went, I know, I know, I know. So when I'm sitting, where he's got me, the door's behind me, and I'm like, so what's up? I said, I don't like that fucking door being there. And on the wall, it's not like one of them alarms mm -hmm. on the wall. So I'm paying them, it was like 35 quid to go then. So it's like four or five sessions with him. You need to come to turn him. Anyway, I've got rid of one phone. I've took an operation, operator's bandage on to do the sights. I'm doing the doors. Give someone else the phone. Gets manned in the office and all that. Uh, and I've had about four or five goals with this guy and I thought, I'm not getting nowhere. And he's telling me things that I should be telling myself. So I goes in one day and he's got this fella sitting here at the end of the desk. So you're there, who I speak to, and I won't do talks and send them out with like four or five people or mental health. It, 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 I'm, it's private, but I'm saying it now. Anyway, this fucking fella's sitting there and his chair's like here. So I've come in and gone, all right, Pete. Hi, Sean, this is a colleague of mine. This is, forget it, fucking, let's call him Tom. This is Tom, he's a friend of mine. I said, you all right? He said, you all right, maybe being? He went, no, not really. I don't, mate, I don't fucking know you. I'm, 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 this is personal. Well, I'm not going to take no notice. I said, why are you going to fucking turn your ears off or something? He said, no, I'm just, I'm just sitting here, it's over here. So I'm speaking to him and he went, I didn't know he was there to test me to push my buttons, right? He was going, you're doing well, but you get aerated a lot. So I'm looking at him and he's throwing the things away. Sean, I've just got to tell you, he said, hey, I'm trained in submission holds and all that. I went, yeah, made up for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I've literally gone, I said, yeah, made up for you, mate. So I said, look, Peter, I'm not really happy with this. I want him to go. He went, why do you feel intimidated by me? He went, look, I, I, I really don't want to be here. So I've 
turn my chair that way so I can see the door. And this fucking gobshite's there. He went, well, why? He went, do you feel intimidated? I went, are you taking the fucking piss, mate? Does your bear tell you that? Do you intimidate your bear or something? He went, Sean, I've warned you. I went, you, sorry, you what? And he's going, now, Sean, I went, no, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm talking to him now. You warned me. I said, look, I'm going to leave. You, no, don't have to. I said, no, I'm going to leave. I want to go. I've stood up, grabbed the chair, thrown the twat at him with the chair, jumped on him because he's brought him in. So he's gone over and said, whoa, whoa, calm down. I said, you, you fucking come set me up. I've jumped on him. He's hitting the buzzer. The alarm going off in the room. But, man, I've come in. I've turned the latch so you can't open it because I don't want no one coming in. No one have latches you can turn. <laughs> so I've turned the fucking latch, I thought. He's going, no, Sean, turn your chair around. He's trying to get me, me back against the chair to relax me. Well, that way it worked. And I kept, oh, yeah, and I kept turning it. So I thought, well, fuck you, can't I'll do that. Men are coming, go, we all right, I'll turn and put it on. He's hitting the buzzer. The staff are running up to three days. He's screaming. He's fucking mental. Get, get them in, get them in, get them in. He's going, Sean, you need I said, calm down. You fucking set me up, you cunt. He's fucking been pegging me. What do you want me to do? But you know, when you lose the plot of it, James, mm -hmm. you lose the fucking plot. Yeah. And I went, ah, oh, fuck. I'm back. And these people, there's a little window like that. Please open the door, open the door. He went, the police are coming. You need to. I went, listen, go and get the fucking police. I haven't it yet. I've turned you over this year. You've hit me with I went, I picked the chair up and I fell out my hands. Go and do what you want. I'm not fucking coming here no more. So I left. They get in touch with me doctors. They say, go and see a mental health fella. And I wouldn't, but he had all this drama going on. Like, in between all this, James, there's all this fucking murder going on. That's got fuck all to do with me, mate. Nothing. And these people that started it just left us to fucking get on with it. And you know, sitting back, I think, you fucking cheeky bastards. Every one of Liverpool just say to me, Sean, what are you doing? It's not your work. What are you doing? But someone's attacking your beard and your fucking kids. It's fucking not happening. I'm defending them. Forget that now. Let him fucking sort that shit out. They've dragged me in it. So I'm going to deal with it. And I've... Mate, they chased me one night from the house. And he had a Vector V6, and they're chasing me, and they're out to somebody shooting at me in the car. And as I'm coming down Green Drive, this is in like the brutal times or something, I'm coming down the drive, um, and as I'm coming up to the lights, the bump from my car, not to push me through the lights. And I'm, I had a Vector V6, they had a Vector V6, theirs must have been a bit faster because they were bumping me. I was floored, it makes me fucking floored. I thought, I'm going to fucking die here. And every, I remember I'm coming to light and I can see, you no, know, the post office vans are out late of a night. This fucking hard tick's coming along and I'm going, fucking, do I slow? Oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, oh, but I always carry rocks in my car. I have these pebbles with faces on. And I'm, I've up my son from throwing them out to try and hit their window. Anyway, they've let a shot go. I've come round this corner down in Bootle. The cars, the, 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 back, the hatchbacks aren't, they? it flew up. And they put a shot right through the car. And I've, I've leaned forward and it's come through, through the back of the car, hit the door frame there, went in the engine mountain. This is what the police tell me after. Anyway, they've gone past me, went, next time you're fucking dead. And I've just gone, come on. But these kids was lunatics. I'm just a dumb that can have a bit of a fight. I don't, I don't want, I don't fucking want it. It's nothing to do with me. You know who it is, but I've took it. I've took it by the reins now, so I've got to deal with it, haven't I? I'm going, ah, fucking kill you. <laughs> so they're facing me in his car. He's out the window. Yeah, you wanking. I'm like, fucking do or die. I've gone to drive the car. It's smoking. The front tyre's gone down. The bonnets flew up and they drove off. That happened in the car, I thought. Is it really worth all this shit fighting with these kids? These kids was running right, and we didn't have a fucking clue. They was on the street crafting and everything. We had just fucking dormant. Um, and I went, what, 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 what? I can't get out of it. I wouldn't back down to no one in my life. And if any of these people seen out to tell you, Sean can have a go and he'll use them as well. So I had to start using them. They're shooting at my house, I'm shooting at their house, they're burning mine, I'm burning theirs. We was going to the auctions for Thursday. Buying cheap cars for two and three hundred quid. 
just some rams keep up. We drive round of the night, me and a couple of the, the doormen. Two of them got not long got out of the big jail centres, good lads. And uh, my little nephew, he was great. <clears throat> I would be driving round and you leave the heater off in your car, close your window so you get that bit of steam so you can't see it. And we'd be driving round, bringing people, what car are they in? We'd see them and just ram them, then just jump out and bat them. And I thought, I'm getting fucking 30 something now. What am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? And then the ton of the, um, the kid across the road, the trouble in one of the venues. So I sent one of my good mates up at the time. So go and see if that kid's there. He went, he's here outside now. Just bar we had. I went, get him. So we got him in the car and brought him down to the club where I was working. And um, I said, Bite your little cunts, this is a document on a big nail bomb in the fucking pub and all that shit. Anyway, um, he's had a little kicking. I'll give him a bit of money. This was on a Saturday. Monday, he goes to the police. Police burst my house, burst the gym, everywhere, but everywhere looking for me. Anyway, this busy rang me up. I said, Look, Sean, he's. It, Kidnapping, false imprisonment, wound and with intent. I was like, what? Can I want to give him a kick him? Well, you've had him picked up the car. You detained him. I said, what am I looking at? My goes tits up. He went, 14 stars. I was like, what? What? He went, 14 stars. He said, that's, that's what's happening. So I got demanded. I got demanded for that on my own in jail. Yeah, uh, we had loads of shit in fucking jail because I'm a doorman. I'm running all the biggest clubs and the biggest bars in Liverpool. Everyone sees a doorman as a bully. They're not all bullies. There's fucking some good lads out there. So I go to jail on my own. Ah, that doorman there from blah, blah, and blah, blah. I've got to start fucking fighting again. I'm like, oh, where the fuck does this end? And you know, your head is busted. Pressure. Tablets don't help, mate. And we get to know some under the door. And we meet me mate, Gary. Me mate's being nicked. And there's a note comes under my door. This is how naive I was with jail. And I said, ching, ching, see you on the yard. So we've just landed in the jail, we're going down for the induction. And there's loads sitting there, so I've walked down, I'm going, who the fuck's ching, ching? Who's ching, ching, eh? Put a f <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Who's ching, ching, eh? Yeah, come on, who is it? Ching, ching means you're getting cut up, ching, ching. Yeah. But I didn't fucking know that. I hadn't done jail, do you know what I mean? I've been an old and fighting and nicked. And first time, I'm like, who the f and then one of the last guys went, Sean, he said, uh, I said, go and find out who Ching Ching is. He went, there's no Ching Ching. I said, the, hey, the fucking no. He went, no, it means someone's going to cut you up, go on out. Where are they going to do it? And you go and happen to the yard. So me and my mate Gary, he's done a few here, um, we've waxed a few. And then jail was sweet. And the reason why jail was sweet is because screw could have other jobs then. Now they can't. You're a screw, you're a screw. I think it's only on 20th year. And I used to have maybe six or seven screws working for me. So when I've gone to jail, what can I tell you? What are you doing here? They can't see to help you. And they wouldn't really help you to go, look, you need to do this. If you want to have a nice, quiet life in jail, you need to do this. You need to do that. Comply with this, comply with that. And stop fucking hitting people. He said, otherwise, you. You're going nowhere. You're stuck here. Anyway, I ended up paying the lad. And I got the charges dropped. And I got out. And then my last one I got, the one I've, I've, I've finished, uh, there was still shit going on. Being Amanda, uh, I live in Warrington. I've been nicked, uh, got put in jail. So Amanda's coming to see me and there's trouble with a couple of people in jail I was having bother with. And then um, Amanda's coming one day and they're outside to swallow her acid in a bottle. And that fucking girl's been through everything, mate. How the fuck she hasn't fucked me off, I don't know. Um, Time, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, but look what you've got. Come on. 
<laughs> uh, honestly, been through thick and thin, mate. I know I'm, I'm going on a little bit forward, but she really has honest. And I'm not just saying it because she's here. Lads close to me and friends are close to me. And, you know, people going about mental health and suicides. I have a tattoo and I got it done in jail. It's Sean, I'm on the TLND. And why I have it there, you can see it. There's four big, three big scars there. See them? Yeah. I cut my wrist. I just had enough. Uh, I was out when I'd done that. And man, it sucked me the ocean, sorted me out. And I used to drive round with this dead in jail. And I used to have 500 paracetamol, 500 diazis, crushed into powder in a, um, in a little, in a tub. And it's been this arm army fella. He said, do you want to do your fucking self film show? And just knock yourself out and sleep and never wake up. Go and get a load of tablets, custom my powder, get a glass of warm milk, drink it, and take all the tablets. You live your kidneys will shut down, you're gone. And it's all round with this little box, this little tub. You know, when you get all your medicine in, and all that, you know, a plastic tub. And the man that you say, what's in that? I'm at all, not, 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 what's in that? I always have, I have the next five then. And, um, where the man that was living, I bought the house right next door to her. And then we started moving in, have a night together, to have two nights, three nights, you know, where, where then? And he had a load of shit again going on in, in one of the bars, you know, and you just fucking had enough. I just couldn't get nothing done. These people was like, we'd go and do something. They do it 10 times worse. And I'm like, look, this family that was close to me, it, fucking stores are out. It's not me. Go and have a fight with the fucking man. This is not my shit. This is not my trouble. It's been to know me I'm dealing with it. But you fucking started that. No one's funding me buying cars. No one's giving me any money. No one's giving me fuck all. I know you just had enough. I pulled me dead engine out. And my, I pulled me X5 into my little drive. Stopped it and parked outside. And she's like, I'm going, where are you? And I'm talking to her low as the winter. Do you remember this? And um, I'm talking to her low. I went, I, I, I just, I thought I can't take that. And I've got no more, more milk in. And we laugh about it now. Got no more, more milk in the car. I'm going to go out and get a bottle. I thought, you know what, I fucking had enough. So I run to me little event. Got me gun out. Little two. I went, fuck it. She went, what? I said, babe, I just, I just can't do it no more. She said, what's up? She went, you're outside, are you? I went, no, no. I went, look, I've had enough. I love you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just tell everyone, look, I'm sorry. I, just, I, just, I shouldn't have got you involved. And, and uh, I've been with him fucking three or four years then. And as she come down, I've got the gun. But she dragged it and put it on the roof in my car. How hard is it when you've got a fearsome reputation, people do look up to you, you've got a missus who loves you, but then the pressure of that life is making you then your family become targets and then you don't even want to be here on this planet as a father as well. Like, how hard is it when it all bulked yes, up? Yes, that, that, that was, that's like the straw that broke the camel's back or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And I broke down, man has got me in the house, babe, what are you doing? What's this? Been them tablets, you need help. I went and seen a proper psychiatrist to put me on the proper medication. Um, and I just thought, you selfish bastard, no to myself. I'm going to fucking end myself. What about me kids? What about me bed? There's a man that ain't been with me for three or four years, looks after me, target her, being an air house, ramming air car, and say, going to fucking swill her ass. And I'm just going to end myself like a shit house. And she's stuck with all the baggage. Nah. And I just went, you know what? Just fuck the shit. Let them deal with the shit and just get on with your life. Then I got a gym in Warrington. I settled down a bit. Then I got me big jail for a gun and bullets in the house that these people that was close to me fucking blew me up. And everybody knows this, but I'm saying it now. He's one of the air off me. Every, every fucker knows, James. When the police nick you, one of my doormen, in, I've got a big night in the arena 
It's all documented. And one of my mates over on the Whittle, it's his beard, was a 40 to something man. He said, Sean, do you fancy going out? Well, I didn't go out, James. I went, um, yeah, yeah, go on, yeah, I'll, I'll check my doors, I'll go around and check all my doors. And like, he's all like, play all my doors over Monday, all the guards over Tuesday. I'm going round. <clears throat> and um, I'm in this bar in the arena. It's got an upstairs, all glass, and it's a concert square. And next minute, she's just a fucking swarm of busies. And uh, the license, he comes out and looked, there's a lot of police here, do you want to see her? I went, well, someone's come in, she went, no, just, there's a lot of police. She mean, helicopter, arm response. I went, for what? She went, Sean, I don't know, but the concert square shocks like that. I don't know if you've been to Liverpool, concert square is like the main place to go. I had that door. So anyway, they've nicked one of my doormen. Little Joe, they've nicked him. So I've I've come running down. And I've gone, what, what the fuck, what? Just before the police come, my lad's been caught with about 60 or 70 tablets. Yeah. And all the tablets, like, look what he's got, Joe. So I'm not working. I didn't do those then. I've got enough to home and I went around and checked them all. You're all right, get your tie on. Get off your phone. Get off this. Get off that. Me and the man has gone out with this couple. Um, and the lads have got all these tablets, so... You're supposed to ring the police, get them nicked. I'm not getting no one nicked. And I put that on. I've never had no kid nicked for any fucking drugs. Don't abide by it, don't like what they do. But look, it's what they do. So what we do, take them to the exits and go, look, get the tablets, get the tablets. The licensees are going to ring the police and you're going to get nicked. Oh, but see that fire exit? The dorm are going to walk up there and you're going to boot that door and fuck off. I'm not going to chase you. So we always let them out. They always got away. So anyway, the licensing had come in. The kids got off. The lads that were upstairs went, Sean, you got any galleys? I went, come on, mate. Fully went, come on, it's my birthday. I'm 40, blah, blah, blah. I went, Joe, kiss one of them. I kiss one of them. And I've got a tablet, mate. I stuck it in my shirt. There. I went, I'll be down in a minute. Gone upstairs to be made. All the police are there. They want you, they want you. I've come down, believe you've got a firearm on you. And I went, oh, fuck off. I'm in the middle of a fucking bar with a couple of thousand people in the old. I've really want to say, so they say to me, lift me up like a fucking Christmas tree. They're nicking one of me dorm and I'm kicking off. And they say to me, this one sergeant, flat cap, he went, you searched him. I went, I've fucking been searched. Then the two licenses and police that are coming over, which I'll tell you about them cunts. They're coming over and I've gone, lads, come on, fucking hell, what's going on here? I've had me search and it's a bit, it's all glass. And he's gone, you ain't going anywhere, search him again. And he's put his hand on me. He went, what's that? I said, what's what? So he's gone like that. I went, fuck all, he went, no, what's that? And it must have been a nullity little thing. Yeah, go on, no. A Gary, mate. A fucking tablet. One tablet. And I went, listen, there's just been 70 or on the floor. The lads bolted the door. I picked them up. It's ended in, it in my pocket. That's all we need is to say to your house. I went, go and say it to my house. So James, the fucking gun, the gun I had, I lent it to someone. I didn't think it was in my house. This is the gospel truth. I didn't think this gun was in my house, right? So I bought this house next to a man then. <laughs> Got all new wooden floor, fit a new back kitchen. Lent this gun to this kids, what people do in Liverpool, loaned them this gun. And now I remember, he went, Sean, I, I didn't need you, just had the scares one. Put it back. The key's under the pot. He must have put the gun back. I've just forgot, because I've got that much shit going on. Busy went, just what we need today, dear house. But no one knows I've got this house, James. No one knew. But the people I was close to knew I'd had this house. Because when you, you get your contacts to the bank, it's gone to an old address I had. And these fuckers knew this. I haven't come see it to the house. Yeah, go on. Not in there, is they? As far as I know, it's not in there. In my proper house, they went to the fucking house where I was staying and found the gun. So these bastards fucking blew me up and every fucking knows this. And I'm saying it for the first time. So they come in about half four in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Man is kicking off. That's <laughs> trying to nick a man, they got the nick one of his own. She's screaming because they're nicking me. 
And my birds are loyalists, but I know all your birds are loyalists. She, del- she burns the phone out in the custody suite. They come and got me three times, but look, so when you speak to your wife and you, will you please tell her, she's blocking the line. <laughs> she's blocking the line. <laughs> but obviously, I think we had now, so they come in and went, Sean, got your guns here. Little stump nose 38 and I'm really went, yeah. But it's too hard, he went, man. He went, me slits ago, I went, longer man. I thought, I, I want to go to jail. I can't do this on the street no more. I'm going to end up killing someone. And these people that was dead close to me, I thought I'm going to, it's, I'm going to end up killing one of them. And I've been around for 25, 30 fucking years. These bastards fucking set me up and every fucking knows this. And I went, you know what, the man, me slits going. I went, look, the man, what are you doing with them? I went, what do you think I'm fucking doing with them? I bought them to protect myself. Not to cause fear and danger, I bought them to protect myself. If you haven't realised, people are trying to fucking shoot me and bear me out. So what am I going to do? Let's have a fight. Come on, fucking hell. So uh, they nicked me. I got six years, eight months. I got 30% off. It was five years, four or something. Did you plead that? Did you plead that? I just pleaded guilty yeah. that way. And they went, do you want bail? I went, no. I thought, fuck it, get it done. Get it done. So they nicked me on the Saturday. Get to Walton on the... Monday, a court Monday, straight to what in jail. <clears throat> a couple of me mates is in. And um, I'm in jail. All these other people that was close to me are fucking made up. I'm in jail. Yeah, fucking in jail. No bed prick and all that. They couldn't fucking fight sleep. I fought their wars. I made their name. Anyway, I'm in jail. So I knew a couple of screws. And then the security he comes up, he goes, yeah, Sean. When you send a letter into jail, they're all checked. When you send one, oh, what's, what's it called when you send it? Well, you've got to open it. Special, special, special delivery. delivery. So the screws, I don't know whether you've done jail. They come to your door on a special delivery. You've got to open it in front of them and see what it is. So you better send your pictures in a bikini and all like that. The screws up. Open your letters, Smitty. Just your bed. Yeah, go on. You put them on your wall. So the screws said, look, you're going to get a pair of saying he sent up and the dogs being on them. And there's an eight uh, smacking it. But I don't fucking do dogs. I don't sell them. He went, look, who's it come from? He went, there's no sender on it. It's from an address. I went, I have an order no tailings. I haven't even got a fucking clothes up yet. I've only been in about eight, nine weeks. I went, I haven't got fuck all. He went, don't accept the parcel. Once you accept that parcel, whether you know a bar or not, and you open it, you're getting nicked. I'm really went, you're getting nicked. So I refused it. Then she goes to go and see him. I went, I don't know who the fuck is. I haven't, I haven't put an app in for trainees. I don't know anyone. Then they'd done it. It was the Christmas before they got nicked, weren't it? And when they'd done it before the Christmas got nicked, you send cards and you'd have the big stamps, don't you? They put fucking Edelman in that to get me nicked in jail. These was people I've been around for... Near 30 fucking years, mate. Why are they doing it? Because I was a nuisance to them. Because they started all this trouble with me and I fell out with them. They couldn't handle their shit. They wanted me to carry on with their beef. Crack on with it. Nothing to do with me. He's all got money. He's all on this and that. Go and fucking do it. He's left me with nothing. Nothing. No one gives me money to buy cars. Guns. Pay the lads for sitting up people's houses, looking after them. I need some scores outside my house. I'm putting lads outside all the fucking houses. They're not paying them. I am in my company. And I, th- I couldn't believe it. I thought, who would send me smacking? It was them. They got. When a police officer says to you, when I'm getting nicked, they finished, when they turn it off, very surprised. They're showing you put a guilty. I went to her, said, you know what? She was a busy. She was an arm response busy and she went, a uh, detective. And uh, she went, I'm very shocked. I said, you know what, girl, I've fucking had enough. I said, well, I said, I've just had enough of the drama and the shit and all the family shit. I can't be asked. I need a break. I said, if I don't, I'll end up getting life off. I'll end up killing someone or killing a couple of people or I'll end up getting killed myself. I said, you know, when you just had enough, I thought, fuck it. I wanted to go, I was there, I wanted to go to jail. 
So she went, well, I just want to tell you something, Sean, off the record. Uh, the people that you're on about are all standing up a certain bar, all drinking cups of tea. And we've had 27 missed calls tonight to say you're carrying a firearm. I said, so what are you saying? Down to them, she went, well, off the record, yeah. They blew me up. These people have been round, looked after them, kept their fucking name up here, fought all their battles. They blew me up. And everyone was telling me in jail. They, I was going, nah, I know I fell out with that event, I'm, I'm telling you. And it, it did. Then the enemies they had, because my mates in jail, was telling me what had happened to them. We got nicked. I got nicked with a gun. Nick. I went, what? That was your blah, blah. And I was, what? And when he was telling me, I thought, fucking hell, yeah, it was. But I was oblivious. I just wanted to sort this trouble. Because all this trouble was going on. You know, you'd have your big king go, yeah, they've done this to the bar, they've done that to you. Oh, so, yeah. I just, I just did. I was in that mindset of, you're bringing trouble. You fight fear with fear. And that's what I was doing. And a lot of me lads got hurt. I got hurt. Mentally, I was fucked. I was fucked for, <laughs> fucked for years. And, and, you know, even driving up here today, I had my teeth being in tears. I was getting emotional because when I was in jail, I listened to a guy called Ray Lamontage or Ray Lamontage. Oh, yeah. Trouble. Trouble. Oh, mate. Great tune. What an album. Oh, great what album. What an album. Sad, isn't it? Oh, it's mate. It's about the women being there. And yeah. Stuff. yeah. Troubles. And, yeah. The, and I'm, I'm singing it to a man that's coming up this morning and she got him. I had a little tear. She got emotional. Because when I was in jail, he was a life for there playing the guitar. And he's playing his fucking guitar and I'm next door in this league. And you don't know who's yelling out the window. I was on this shitty beam and I'm going, I don't know that fucking guitar off you. I'm fucking putting it over your head, you cheeky cunt. It's like half ten at night, but I think it was a bit early. Walton's like mad. <laughs> when I got to this league, he was like a bit quiet. And he's playing these tunes. So when I've gone in, I went, listen, mate, you know you... you I'm finishing off for 24 years, man. I don't give a fuck what you finish. I'm finishing off my sleep. I've got I I get up at half four, sailing me pants. I was mad sailing, Jay. Um I said, I don't fucking kill you. What anyway, what are you playing? I'm playing this like who the fuck's Ray Lamontaine on my And he had a little iPod, a little iPod. Uh, because he'd done something to his neck and he had this little iPod thing. And he went, listen to him. And I listened to that album, James Trouble, fucking hell, mate. Loved it. Yeah. Got me through me jail. Honest. Got me through me jail. That album, I could relate to the word trouble, you know, he's worrying. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, your bird saves you. And I'm singing it to her. She knows the songs. She went, I've never heard them. And she's coming up on the visit. I was telling her, oh, I can't get into that. And now, we haven't heard it for ages. And obviously, I'm up here because it's my anniversary. Uh, I didn't know it was when you, you booked it. Um, and it was a bit emotional coming up, to be honest. It was, it was good. It was good. It was so how good. does that make you feel then? You're fighting a war that's not even yours. You're fighting for people who you thought had your back. And then it turns out they've then set you up where you're then becoming suicidal. Your message is getting put under pressure. How much do you feel let down then? Or angry? Or how do you feel towards mate, it all? Mate, you know what? There's no loyalty in the life of crime no, anyway. No, you, you've learned no, the hard no, way. No, it isn't. But how and, does it make you feel to be staunch and try to do the right thing but then it's all came crumbling down where you've just been used you, you know what I went guilty get, in the police they looked at my ankle where'd you get them I bought them on this I went to a car boot sale I got told to some fella he had army stuff and he got me them or oh, I met some fella in the van I just told him a load of shit uh, and then when she told me that that these people were very close to me the dad loads of phone calls, they're all sitting there drinking tea, like fucking big Charlie potatoes. Could she have been saying that though, just to fuck with no, your head? No, I knew her mate, she was arm response. She pulled me a lot of times and she used to say to me, what are you doing? You got a family now, oh, what are you doing? I'd busy saying to me, what are you doing? This is police telling me while the trouble's going on. It's not your beef, get them to sort it. But I just took it by the reins. Anyway, when she told me that, and then and I'm in jail, I'm, I'm, I've come out. As I'm in jail, I thought, you know what? If, if I would have got bail, me said, look, we'll apply for bail. You've got big businesses. Uh, it was my first prison sentence. I've been demanded three times. That was my first prison sentence. It's your first sentence. What age were you? 
When I went in, um, 38, was it, man? 40. Yeah. So it's only my first sentence. So I was down as a businessman, being locked, remanded a good few times, uh, but the police here is having a small army behind you. Not a big door firm that's protecting the fucking city and all the young kids that are going out there, stopping them selling fucking pills and everything in your club. Um, and I was 40, and if she would have told me that and I would have got bail, I would have went and killed them. My solicitor said to me, Lionel, he went, look, we'll apply for bail for London. We'll get your bail. Let's look at the stats. I know it's going, it's very hard to get it, but you've got to sort all your business out. You've got your wife and all that. We need to, there's a lot to sort out here. I'll apply for bail, I went, don't. She said, Sean, well, look, we've got a good chance of getting it. You're not going to leave the country. You're not an absconder. It's your first sentence. But obviously the police knew me very well. He said, let's try it. And I, I wanted to, for Amanda's sake, you know, to sort things out with Amanda and all that, and the baby. And I said, no. So why would I, I, I'd kill them, mate. I would have killed them. How was it, Sean, being in there? Were you ever worried for your wife's safety knowing that you're inside and Every can't day, do fuck mate. all? Every fucking day. I've never shoved nothing up my ass. I got used to shoving them. <laughs> mate, your ass is for exit, not for entry. <laughs> What's your ass for? To exit stuff out your body, not for entry. Uh, so I've gone into jail. I've needed a phone, just loaded jail stuff. Well, we can probably do it another time. And you know these the old Nokias? I don't know, they're about that big, are they? Yeah. I get the phone off this lad. Get us a phone. He was like four and they quit that. So he said to me, charge it. So he gave me the cable with the, the first night, mate. I'm on him. I think Kate Wing was the demand wing then when I've gone in. I was only on the demand wing for four days because I've gone guilty. So I can go into general population. So I didn't want to get remanded, get put in with all the scrotes and the baguettes and the tabby bashes. If you if you go guilty, they'll put you in general population. Well, they had a few mates in them. But I was there for two or three years. Anyway, this lad to give me this phone. So I just thought, fucking plug it in. No one with your kettle. I plugged it in and blew the landing. <laughs> fucking talking, who had the fucking phone? And I'm like, fucking hell. We had to, what, what to do with the phone? Well, mine's gone. And they're like, we're just being banged up. There was still screws on. He went, Sean, they'll fucking come here, man. What, what, what? He, had, he went, I'm fucking on my phone, man. I don't know this kid. I've only been in three nights. I'm going to take the fucking phone, lad. He went, you throw it out the window. But you fucking can't, can you? got the mess on it. Throw it down the toilet. He went, no, I need the phone. He went, I'll be fucked. He said, plug it. I went, it plug it, no fucking for you messing. He went, but he had loads of businesses. I had like 27 doors, clubs, sites. I had loads of bad money. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. How'd you plug a phone? He went, mate, here's how you plug a phone. Plastic bag, like a wash bag, with a tissue, <laughs> get your phone, put loads of shower gel on it, and up it goes. I went, nah, go on then. He went, no, no, no. It's going up your ass. I went, not going up my ass, mate. I told him, if anyone's listening, he got it. He went, look, I'll show you. So he got it already. He went, oh, mate, I'm not bad. He went, I said, go on then, let's see. He went, oh, no, that's for you, right? I went, mate, I ain't fucking plugging that. He went, get some, mate. <laughs> I've so torn my ass up <laughs> and I thought I can't, I can't, I can hear the screws. Who's blue done lucky and they're opening doors. They're all going screws are on the Germans on them. I made them got it. And I made I can't get it up. I went fuck it. And then I've heard the door and the door here. And I've just sat down. Fucking hell. Mate, anyone who says it's easy, it's not. It's fucking hardware. How them fucking <laughs> Paul sad to me, you need a fucking medal, <laughs> yeah, believe me. The one who says it's easy, mate. they've done it far too many times, mate. <laughs> it's hard, <isn't> it? <laughs> but you know what? You know what? It become the norm. <laughs> it become normal, of me. I could have the I'd have the bag ready, the tissue would be in the bag, my phone would be there, I'd have my sim in my fucking bell ends. <laughs> I haven't had my bell end cut, so I've still got my force I'd have my dinghy there. I'd have the phone and use it. I put it there ready. I went to bed with fucking shower gel on my ass in case they come in and I could get that up in one, two, three, four, go. 
just goes up. The things you do for so, love, Sean, and that. It's so <laughs> it. And you know what? I laugh now. It weren't about the money. Uh, I had to speak to my bird mm -hmm. because she's all he had, mate. I had my mates, he had Walshie, I had Alex. I had my mates at Met and Jail, who's still one of my best mates now, Mikey. Great guy. Oh, we are, yeah. I had all my old family, my brothers, my mum and all that. But how ironic sticks. Me first, I get in jail, and a man who's coming on a visit and see me on her own, and you know, this, that'll be all right. And then the, the second visit, my dad come. And when your dad walks in, he goes, Oh, lads, I'm fucking made up with you. I went, What? Do you fucking mean? He went, Lads, you was, you, what's going on? He was going to fucking kill someone or be killed. I said, Dad, them cunts, and I told, man that I told him what had happened. He said, Do what? He said, Well, you're better off than here. I said, oh, thanks. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Jail was the only place I could go to sleep and felt safe. Sad but I'm not. Felt safe. Sad but I'm not. Now, cameras in my house, fire extinguishers, it's fucking mental. I live in a separate room from Amanda. I don't have her in my room. don't have me, the kids in the room. I have everything by plant go there. Mate, I don't even have a bus car now. The cheeky bastard took all the wheel nuts off my car last year and just left the, you know, your thingy nuts. Yeah, the boats. That one, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm in the car, I'm going up to the... Where Wink's lift? Poor mate, who's dead. I'm going in the car, I'm dying, I'm like, it's not fucking right, this, I pulled over. Leicester, go and see me, our mate who died, Wings, God bless him. Uh, and I'm driving up to Leicester, and my car starts to fucking shake. No nuts on it. Just them safety ones, no, you think you're locking nuts. I'm like, what the? F so I'm in the eight, rang the mountain, he went, you can't drive that. So why? He went, I bet your wheels have come off. I said, what do, you, what do I need? He went, you need 16 fucking nuts. I said, I've got two nuts in the fucking car that'll come with me on this job, you know what I mean? He went, no, your nuts are gone. The bean that took the nuts off my car. I have an hose pipe in my garden that will reach my car in case they burn it. Even now, I don't have trouble now. These lads that had all the trouble, I've spoke to half of them. I don't have a problem with them now, James. I really don't. They understand that we're my beef. And I'm like, all oh, that fucking shit you put me fucking beard through. A man that's coming in the jail and I moved her twice. She lived in Eighton first, then in Warrington. I had three fucking hours. I owned a warrant since she was living, swapping, swapping. Can't get you, we'll get your bird. I'll be a fucking man and get me his that cunt. What are you going to have to be bird for? I'm here in jail. What's the worst thing about being in prison, Sean? Well, one, obviously not seeing your loved ones. You mm. don't take yourself. Not seeing your loved one, but just watching your business go, mate. The police, two licensing officers, and I'd love to fucking name them, mate, but I won't. Yeah. Uh, I've gone to jail. They went round to every door I had and went, available security is still on here. Within three or four weeks, we'll shut you down. We'll revoke your licence. The director's just been done for guns and all that. So I put everything in the man's name, we dab it down and secretly. Took everything off me, guys. So I'm going from here and five or six grand a week. My business return over 1.2 and a quarter million. And we're in, what, three or four months? I'm lucky if I'm doing eight grand on doors, mate. Took everything. Took everything. Please. And the reason why the police done it, I kept about three good doors. I had a door in Liverpool called Flanagan's, like famous Flanagan's, an Irish bar. And a man that kept that. And he had a place called Royal Birkdale. Golf in Southpool. I had that for time, about seven years. I had the Flanagans for 11 years, maybe 12. So we had Dorman on Flanagans, couple of little bars out to the city centre. And it was the Open, it was the first year he was having the Open in uh, Royal Birkdale. And they needed like 80 guards. So I'm in jail, I said, man, speak to him, the lads will sort that. Alex will sort that out here, Alex work. Walsh, he'll help you with that. It's a couple of good lads around us. Get on that and sort it. 
the dirty bastards, these people I was close to, have rang Royal Birkdale, sent a picture of me in jail, um, villain, all gang, all that shit. Uh, jail, this is the company you've got. But the are fella that running, I think his name was Tom, like an army general. And he rings a man up, man goes and has a meeting with him. He said, look, I'm getting all this about Sean. And I'm, we, we've had this for seven years. But because there was big money coming in it, and these used to have a little scorty firm, this, these people I was really close to. And it was just all fucking jealousy, mate. Jealousy. I was going to them, big money. said, man, that'll do. That'll, that'll just... I don't know if money keeps going anyway. There's an extra bit of money. Keep that, put it to one side. Put it in the in the in the, the guard company, not the, the door company. He took a man to court. And he was gonna do she was gonna do them for slander. They went, look, we can't have you here. So the main guy in Royal Berg there went, I haven't got a problem with A was Corsi. I've had them seven years. We need 80, was it 84, 89 staff. They're providing all the staff, they're all SIA regulated. We've gone through all the structures and everything we're doing. And I'm happy. Police, if you have anything to do with Abel, we'll shut it down. It's the first open over here in this country. Was it 2001 or something like that, or 2000? Yeah, Just, he went, yeah. So this busy's rang Amanda. She put a big complaint in over the, the police officers. And he's rang Amanda. And she went, listen. She went, you know. I'm running that, and yeah, it is yours. And I'm running it with his dad and all good lads and all, I hate up. She went, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. When Sean gets out, don't forget I'm in jail at the time, and everything's just going, mate, and I'm on, I'm on the phone, and I've got bits of beef in jail. And I'm... Out of all my dorm and that, yeah, they all just fucked off. A few of them stayed behind They were just there for the wage. Just there for the wage, mate. If I'm going to fight someone, they're all standing behind this here, yeah. They won't fucking get in the fight. I've gone to jail. I've gone. They just want to stay on the little talk. No, no, I'll stay here. I'll get your wages. I really find you find out who tr true mates are when you go to fucking jail, mate. And me mate, me mate told me that my good mate Paul Arden, who's done a lot of fucking jail, mate. He's done a podcast a few months ago. Staunch fucking top, top guy. And he went, you'll find out who you might have when you get to I was like, nah, he went, I'm telling you, can I just go and visit him in jail? So he went, Sean, you know, when you go to jail, mate, people just forget about you. You'll have jail, mate. And when you come out, oh, how are you? He said, they won't send you no money in. They won't send you a pair of fucking trainers and all the T-shirts, but they won't come and visit you. And anyway, this man has put the complaint in about these two lights and officers that are bent as fuck. And yeah, man, Amanda went, I have proof that you've took back Anders. Never mind, off Sean. I've seen these two police officers and I fucking love, I think one's retired now, one might be might still be there. Um, I've given them envelopes. I'm one of the biggest clubs when they put in for a late license before a late license has come out. Here's our application, Sean. Will you pass that to them? Well, I've just seen a brown folder. Yeah. Grand every month, them pair of cunts again. And they're ringing all the licensees up to fuck me off at the doors. I'm doing a proper job. Could have gone to jail. Still the same lads on the door. No problems on the door. But like the boss has gone to jail. So the company looked bad. But let us change the name and let us run the fucking doors. But they're taking a fucking grand a month. A grand a fucking month to run it. That was only off one big club I was on. What else was he take? And I'm the criminal. Nah. And I just lost faith with everyone, mate. I don't like the police. The police have lost control of the city. They haven't got a clue. You go around Liverpool in your car, you don't see fucking police. You don't see them. City centre, you will. Come out of the city centre, you won't see no police. What do you think of the state of Liverpool the now? Do think it's a good place or a bad place? No, I think Liverpool is booming, booming. Uh, the singing competition they've just fucking had. What's it called? Eurovision. Eurovision and me. Look, I love Liverpool. Same. I, like I still go to Liverpool. Yeah. Amazing city. But people don't know what goes on there. You get the odd ones, someone being it and put on a co in a coma. But what about the other ones that have been just slashed or knocked out and the animals have been out? 
You're not reporting all that shit, are you? You're not reporting that. Liverpool isn't as safe as what people think it is. Great of a day. Come 12, 1 in the morning. Different place, mate. Different fucking place. Most of us think you're seeing in prison, Sean. Um, I've seen quite a few things in prison, mate. I seen a kid get swilled up with a load of sugar. He was a nonce. Deserved it. Uh, that was fucking horrific because you allow kettles now. Years ago, I don't know if you know the jails up here, you went outside on a wall and the water was just hot enough for the cup of tea. Now you've got kettles in your room. So I've been moved off G Wing and of the puppy with the lifers and I knew a few of them. And they had this, this fellow around, yeah, give him Kit Kats to the screws. Yeah, go on, do that. Want the job and always round, I'm always standing by the office. He was a fucking long man. And one of these kids, there was two lifers there, they'd only come down for the visits. And they got like 24s, 21, which is big then than when I was in. Uh, and he went, he's a fucking nonsense. I said, mate, look, do your own way first. Everyone calls everyone a nonce. <laughs> well, you know, when you say he looked like a nonce, he fucking, he looked like Jimmy Savile without Sam, the hair, mate. Yeah. But without the hair. Or Rolf, Rolf Alice without the beard. The hundred percent. And he went, he's getting swilled in. I said, well, he went, when's the lads are going to clean the safety, he's getting swilled. So, because I knew a couple of screws and you're on a life for unit, leave your door open. If you don't go to work in jail, you get locked up. But because I knew some of the screws, and on the landing, we had uh, a rower, a bike, and a, and a stepper. So they leave me out all day, I'd just have a go on that, children, have a go on that. So I can see them, and they've got, a, a, two jars of coffee, coffee jars, with a load of sugar in it, and boiled two of the, two of the lads, the lads done it, he had the two of them, and put the two of them straight in his kite, mate. He was standing there, and he's leaning away, you go on the stairs, yeah, boss, no oh, boss, bit of like, you know, one of them. And the kids, the kid got nicked for the way, and I see, you know, the kid's who in 24 years, he was only in two and a half years into his sentence. And he only come back to Liverpool for his visits. And he thrown the fucking two of them on him, James. I've never heard screams like it in my fucking life, mate. Making your run. Every, all the pads are shut. There's only cleaners out. There's no water on the landing. They're putting the towel on. Putting the cloth on and that's sticking. They're pulling it off. It's, been, it's bad, mate, it's bad. I've seen that. I've seen the lad have a fucking, well, a finger up his ass first. And then a knife, because he, he dubs someone's gear and I goes in the pad to see this kid over a, a, a bit of trouble he had with someone on a different wing on the visiting list. And he went, you want to just give us a minute, give us a minute. He went, just watch that door there. And this kid was a punter. He was a punter anyway. So there's two gearheads. This sort of kid being on a visit said he hasn't got the drugs. And they're going, you fucking have you little cunt. No, no, she couldn't pass me, she couldn't pass me. So the kids hit them, but they're not, they're, look, they're just little victims. They're hitting this kid and they're not knocking them out. He's like, no, no, no. So I would just fucking choke him out with you. I would just, just choke him. I mean, that made me even once he hit me, choke him, lads. I went, just choke him. So he's got him this way, choking him. And as he, as he is, he's on the bed choking him. So pity that he's over the bed. The other lads pulled his pants out of your own. Spitting on his ass, I thought, you know, you're gonna fucking fuck me or something. And he goes, with his finger like that, <laughs> up his ass, it's there. I can't get it. So I'm standing, I'm standing by the door going, what the, what the fuck are you doing? Fuck him, let's wait till he, have, he won't have a shit. The kid's asleep. So you get, you only get the plastic spoons, but the, the knives are a bit thicker. They've got the plastic knife handle up his ass. I'll be all right, fuck this off. But I will get, they got it. They fucking got it, mate. They got it and smoked the brains out. I seen him in the morning. I seen him, not the morning, the day after when. I was going, he went, sound, I'm fucking sound. He said, good gear. He went, right from the Turks ass, mate. Lovely. It's my people go on people's asses, mate. How many dates do you, how many dates do you think you collected all in, Sean? 
Mate, de- debts of I'm glad you brought debts up. Debts I've collected in mate hundreds. And there's a few I haven't got. And you know what it is? Um and I'm not making myself I wear my heart in the sleeve. I won't take debts unless there's a cause or the or the legit and there's an invoice, a paper trail. Um and I've had grown people older than me, my age, crying in my office to be ripped off by builders or, you know, investments. Investments is hard to do. Uh, yeah, so everyone called debt collectors, bullies, this, that. Mate, I've never bullied no one in my life that didn't need fucking bullying. Um, and it's like now, so I've got a big job now, right? This is now, this is live now. Matt Leg brought up the other week. A girl gets raped. The fella gets eight years. Not just for rape, for aggravated rape. A jury of 12 found you're guilty unanimously. Mm. So we got eight years, and the judge said to aggravate rape, which is 10 times worse. She got in the house when he's raped her. She's one of the first w- women, and you can Google this, to sue a rapist because she lost a job. So we got eight years in 2016, he's still on license till 2024. She sued him in 2019. She won a court case. It was all in the national papers. You can just put rapers, Cheshire. Uh, and she won the court case for 89 grand. And her head's fucked, mate. She's, she's gone. She come to the office, met me. And I was like, whoa, girl. I can't the fuck down. Not sure. I'm, I'm a, you know, medication. I'm on diazid. I'm going to take one now. She took one. I said, look, take another one. I can't do that. She went, there's the story, I'm reading the story, rapist, chess, yeah, blah, 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 I'm looking at it. She said, I've got a court order here for 89 grand. And I said to her, cheekily, I went, fucking hell, okay, I don't buy 89 grand, you need 89 pence for the fucking bar of soap, you need a fucking good watch, what's happened to you? Laughing like, she went, I don't wear makeup or nice clothes on. So why she went, in case people are attracted to me. I thought, how fucking sad is that, mate? There's a beard that doesn't want to really look after herself. With makeup and clothes because she's scared in case people attack her. Because this fucking rapist rapes her. Well, I've got the court order and I'm coming for him. He's changed his name. I only got the job assigned to me. Where are we in now? June. May. Mid May. So I've had the job about three or four weeks and I'm looking, I'll find the cunt and I will knock on the door. So what, I'm, what I'm, the point is, is anyone going to call me a bully then? They're not hardy. No, you've been respected. Because he's a rapist. Yeah. So why you call me bully when I go and click your mum and dad's debts and they have a court order? I don't come and take your fucking car or your furniture outside your house. I'm helping genuine people. So how does it work then in debt collecting? What's the deal? Do you take a 50% of No, no. How so the deal work? is, so if you have a court order, right? Mm. So somebody owes me 100 bags. Yeah, someone each. owes you 100 grand. You, yeah. you have a judgment. Mm-hmm. That judgment lasts forever, mate. Is it a legal, legal? House? Yes. So I have a solicitor that works me in the office. So you're, you're owed the money, right? James English is owed it on the ground. You tried to collect it, you can't get it. So listen, you say to them, I call Sheriff Sabine, you can't find them. You come to me. You assign the debt to my company. Yeah? I don't buy it. You don't buy debts. That's all bullshit. You assign the debt for Sean Smith Enterprises to collect your debt. I, Sean Smith. I charge you a percentage of what I collect for you. So I'll say, you know, me five grand of front expenses for me and the lads, the office to do the work, find out where he is. We'll go and travel down, see how he's doing, see what he's up to. Video, I'll send you footage. Here he is. Here he's going to work. There's his bear going with the kids to school. He's got this business, that business. I send you all that fair. So I go, look, that five grand you give me for expenses, I've spent fucking, say I've popped in the grand. I spend four on paying the lads to come sit in the house. I'll get them video and watching them. I'll get all camera stuff. I go, look, I've got them now. So today, I'm going to land on them and I'm going to approach him for your money because I know he's got that other business. Because what a lot of people do, so say your company's called Ruth and North, Ruth and North, SW Ruth and Northwest. You can go bankrupt, change it, open another company you might stay and call. SW Roofing North, just leave the rest out. Same fucking company. You've gone from unit B to unit fucking F. 
It's your business. Home money you're driving home. Oh, you like your cunt. You're in that fucking office every day. You go in there with your rags on. You're sitting in the back office getting all the work. I do all that. Everything's signed over, everything's legit. But when they've done the 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 YouTube device and the Netflix and they called it UK Scariest Dead Collector, which it's fucking embarrassing. It's still a good name to get people watching. Yeah, though. it is. How does yeah. that then affect your life? Does because then people know who you are. That's watched worldwide. So does that enhance it with a positivity or does it bring a lot of people try to test you then? Since that's been out, and you can you can ask Amanda if she's coming back. I get challenged. It may look even now, I think it's seven years old. I think it's seven, something like that. And you get people going there, oh mate, are you that fellow who slapped that line? You that tech collector? And I go, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, I enjoyed that. I go, Oh, thanks, mate. You know, just oh thanks, glad you enjoyed it. But oh, you do still doing the same shit. And then you get people going, You case there is correct, really. Knock on my door, lad, I'll leg you. And I go, <laughs> I'll just go, hey, I go, mate, listen, listen, listen. I ain't no gangster, I ain't no hard case. I just stand up for what I believe in. I won't back down from any man. I'm 57 years of age, I train like fuck, I spar every week, I'm not a fucking idiot. Don't see me like one, mate. I know you case guys, I go, look. And I get, I go, it shouldn't have been the UK scariest deck collector. It should have been the UK's, UK's mediator. But TV people being TV people sound better, doesn't it? Yeah. And they've done it. And it's it done worldwide on Vice and Netflix, 102 million views. And I think it's 32 million on YouTube. Well, when I last look, I've, I've never watched it. I've never, I won't watch this. I've never watched the Vice or the YouTube. See the Vice one when you were slapping the two kids? Yeah. The bodybuilders, like that went, I, I still get sent. Yeah, it's still, it's, I still yeah, get yeah, sent. Yeah, no yeah, joke, yeah. I still yeah. get sent. Well, listen to this. How was yeah. that? Who was the kids and how was all, all that come about? Was that, was that totally 100% legit? Was that? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Listen, face? listen. So I've got two guys filling me in the gym and Tony, everyone knows who he is. Um, Oh, the kids who were slapped? Yeah. Yeah, so I've got them filming in the gym. And there's a bit of a sad story here. So the one with the tattoo, and it was a young lad, stocky lad, Dave. He died him. Oh. It was fucking dead sad, mate. Uh, so anyway, uh, they're in the gym, and I don't have steroids sold in the gym. Simple as that. I'm not, as you said. Um, I have, it was full of weights. I have... 12 bags now, there's two rings, and it's all fitness and cardio. So look, if someone wants to take juice, go and take it in your fucking house, mate. I'm like, that's what you want to do. Go and do it. I'm not asked. Don't fucking sell him his gym. So uh, I've said to this kid, this, the one with the tattoo, I didn't really know. He's only been coming in the gym a month or two. But Dave, the little bodybuilder, he was on juice. He told me he was on juice. Uh, I said, Sam, he's going in for shows. We went to Southport and watched him do a show. And this little fucking idiot he was with, I'm glad you brought him up. Yeah, because that slap done his life the way he got the tattoos gone, he's got a normal job now, so I believe. Um, and I said to the film crew, I got told he was selling gear in the gym. I thought, you fucking cheeky cunt. Now look, I'm not going to be like, oh, I, he, I'm not out. I went, he's selling juice in the gym and he's not keeping me fuck up. Not only is he taking the piss selling it, he's not even offered me a fucking thing out of it. So I'm fuming. So I've said to the camera crew, look, just just wait by the desk. So when you come into my gym, there's a desk. And my office used to be in the gym, there's a desk. So what's all I said, I just need to bother this kid. Just, and I'm like that with that mic thing you had. And then he's coming in and went, look, just. So I said to the man, tell him, tell him I want to see him in the office. I goes down the office. Bumph. Here's fucking Vice or whoever used to film it. Behind me desk like that. All right, I went. I said, look, forget. You see me saying, look, forget about this. Because I'm there. I can't say, hang on. Do you just want to go? I'll start again. I'm, I'm, I've got a, a bit of a, I had a bit of a temper on and I can control my temper. I'm really good. I'm really good. But I thought, you fucking cheeky bastards. Send them fucking gear in the gym. One, you know I don't have it. If you want to take it, take it. You want to take it in your house and you can't do it. Don't fucking sell it here. <laughs> so anyway, he went, 
and you see me say, look, fucking forget about them. You said gear in the gym, so I slapped him and said, like, you owe me a grand, and you owe me a grand. Set up fucking gear at my gym. And then the other Muppet that was with me, he tried to give me a few digs. And if you watch it, he's hit them. But no, I did generally slap him. I, I did. Um, and then when they've gone, I'll give him a proper dig then. Because I generally didn't know they was there. I generally, hand on ass, and that's on me, Nan's fucking cursed. I didn't know he was there. Anyway, he's fucked off. I said, you owe me grand. So Dave, who worked in the gym, I said, I'm shocked at you. I said, you're a fucking boss kid, you. I never took nothing off him. I made the other kid pay the grand. And then Dave, uh, young stocky lad, he's out at a, a concert. And he's had a bit of drink and he's arguing with his beard. And you know when you have that little rain stop over your door? Mm -hmm. You know, like a, he's climbed on that to shout his beard. She's up in the window and he, he's let me know you're not getting there. And I've been back to you the ticket. The fucking poor kids fell. Only, only like 11 foot. Bang's head dead. Dead mate. And you know, he was dirty bastards putting things on the side. Sean killed him. She all turned him out the window. Come on, mate. For fuck's sake. It was fucking sad, mate. It was yeah, fucking nice, horrific. Sad. It was God proper rest sad. His soul. Um, Jocks, Scotland. <clears throat> the first, I knew a couple of Jocks, but never really sat down and met them. And I get a phone call one day. Um, must be probably two years now. Off this guy. He said, hello, hello, my, uh, my name's... I can't do a fucking jock accent. Uh, my name's Jay, uh, Jay Paul. I went, yeah, he went, look, uh, I've had a bit of drug issues and drinking, and uh, I wondered if you, if you could help me. I went, what way, mate? He said, no, he went, no, no. I went, I don't sell gear. I'm not getting gear up to Scotland. I thought it was a joke, you know. He said, no, mate, I'd love to come down and see you, and uh, I believe you'd help a few people out. And, uh, mate, I'd come and work in your gym and stay in your gym, and... Uh, and he sent to get me on the state and now I went, um, I said, look, mate, bring me back. So I put the phone down. He ran me back. He said, bring me back tomorrow. Put him off again. And he ran me back the next day. He said, no, I'm being genuine. I went, well, I'll tell you what, mate. Are you genuine? You want to come down? Yeah, I went, all right, I'll give you the chance. Have you fought before? No, I went, have you trained? Yeah, I've always trained. I went, don't be coming here to fight. If you want to come here and sort your head out, I've got a room and all I want off you, look after me, Jim. That's it. All right. Uh, week after, mate, this fucking Jay Paul turns up. Scottish, Dundee. That far from me? About an hour. An hour. <clears throat> Pulls up a little bag. Hey, mate, I'm, I'm Jay. What can I do? Oh, yeah. Mate, that kid stayed with me when he first come for probably two months, maybe three months. Probably two months. He just changed like that, mate. Training every day, waking up through the night training, showing I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Then he fell off the wagon a bit, he had problems with his kid. Uh, and then he went back home, then he come back, he fought for me. He had a fight for me, bare knuckle, which was his hard fight for his first fight. His face was ripped to fuck, never give him, mate. Fucking heart of a lion. I don't know whether you jocks have got it or this kid has got it, believe me. And then he fought again, his lip got split, his eye got split. And we're like probably two and a half years down the line now. And I get a big grill on my face because he's doing well. He's got a good job. He speaks to me all the time. I give him my dog. He's got me dog. I was up here a few weeks ago in Dundee. Uh, and a great lad, mate. A great lad. And then from him... I met another big lad, uh, <laughs> big John Ramsey, big heavyweight. He's four for us. He's, he knows you from up here. Because uh, I told him I was coming here today. Oh, well, can we come down and get on the pug? I went, no, I'm just sitting with James. And I went, but we'll go out. I went, well, he's all fighting for fucking three weeks. <laughs> so Jay isn't, but big John is. He's in Dundee. He's fairly well known, John. Uh, but talking about fighters, I asked a fighter because I asked a fighter because I mentioned this because it was it, it was a bit I felt for me. Um, 
So one of my fighters who I'm really close to, everyone I know who it is, uh, because Big Johnny looks after him up here a few weeks ago. So I've got this fight. I, he said I, I could say his name, but I don't want to say his name. He's one of the best in the country. He's two-time British champion. He's got a European belt as well. Uh, and he's been around me for about, fucking hell, to, over 10 years. And he's had problems, drugs, diases, uppers, downers, pre uh anything, anything. And he's always been bad. And just, you know, I'm in Wales once and he, he lived in York, so everyone will know who he is. And he said I could say it. <clears throat> and I fucking really hate me this. This only happened to a few, maybe three months ago. I had to cancel the show because of this, this guy. So we have another guy living in the gym, another jock. I'm getting all your fucking, <laughs> all your people coming down to me, mate. So after this, I'll probably get more. But Dave, why well, isn't getting on to this guy? Dave lives up here in Scotland. And he was an alcoholic, his wife died. Dead sad story, mate, Dead fucking sad. He's been coming to my show for years, alcoholics, being me up twice, near died twice. I said, look, you'll have a chance. My man, Amanda's friend, who comes all the show, stays over now, man. you last chance. He's been with me since this February, but now in June. I've been took one drop of ale. Saying Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday morning with me in the gym. We do little jobs together. Great guy. So well done, Dave. Great fella. So he's in the gym. Me best mate, one of me top fighters, if not the top fighter. He's on one and he's, he's taking drugs and he's this. I'm like, oh, fucking hell, I can't believe it. He's on it again, blah, blah, blah. He's fighting in five weeks. That's why I cancel the show. So his bearding goes, look, he, he, he's not him. Um, can't breathe. He's breathing funny. I said, what do you mean? So man, he goes, get an ambulance, because a man that lives there in the house, I live here in the house. I don't live in the house. I live, like, next to the house. Um, so, man, there <laughs> rings me. <laughs> I like living in the garage, which is like separated from the house. I've got to have my own room and everything. I live in the garage. This is how fuck my head is. I live in my garage because my garage is facing me out so I can watch anyone if they go to my house. And I've got no troubles now, James. But yet, I'm just stuck in that way. Old habits. Protection, fire extinguishers, putting things around the house. Old pipes, having me dog, having me fucking gum shield, me, me shorts I need to throw on. It'll take me four seconds to get out and get over the wall. And oh, it's, it's fucking stupid, mate. My head's been fucked up for years. I'm all right now. <laughs> <laughs> but look, listen, the way to a successful marriage, guys, is separate bedrooms, believe me. A bed is for sleeping. Like an ass is made for exit, not empty. Bed for sleeping. Come on, have sex on my else. I like sleeping. I can't sleep. It's not fair, Amanda. I have four hours tops. So I've got to get up and about. And anyway, let me get back to this guy. I was getting a bit thinking that. I'm what I can speak now. So he's off his head. His beard brings me beard. And uh, I've seen a bit of shit. And I've seen someone die in front of me, mate. I've seen someone killed in front of me. And I've seen a fucking dead person. I used to help a friend out in the morgue. I've seen dead people. Bodies don't bother me. But to see someone actually get killed in front of you and hear that last breath get drawn and see their eyes go, it, it's not fucking nice, mate. And I've seen someone who's just been killed. But they, I can't tell. Anyway, she rings me beard. My beard rings me. And I go, pop your laptop in there. So I go, what is he? She said, he's fucked. He's off his head again. So it's about 10 past seven in the morning. And his girlfriend has got to go to work. And he's my best mate. I look up to this guy. He's one of the toughest fellas I've ever known. He can fight like, like fuck. He looks amazing. And he's had shit like I've had shit. And I should have let him go away, but I can't. I love him. You know, you have that man love. I just love the kid. He's a fucking boss lad. Anyway, I, she went, I ring the police. went, don't fucking ring the police. Well, we got a bit of beak on them all, a couple of tablets or loads of diazes. Or, don't fucking ring the police. 
So I goes and gets Dave from the gym. And uh, there's a funny part of this. I went, he's off his head again. Come with me now. So I picked him up, goes to flat, goes in, James. And he's lying there. So I went, I'll fucking wait to come to up. So I took a, a vitamin B12 jab. You get vitamin B12 mm -hmm. jabs. I've stopped at the garage, which is by his. Big, big, a big pure organs, vitamin B12 jab. I went, I'll crush his balls. I'll wait to come to up. I said, don't, don't get the police. So it goes on the season. I went, fuck. Come on. Let, 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 let's call him Billy. Billy. He cuts his ball and I went, I went, nah, I can't. Can't stick my fingers up, my mate. I just <laughs> fucked that off. I can't fucking. And Dave was going, no, I went, fuck it. Nah, I can't. He, I can't. So I racked his balls. I'm picking him up off the bed. Come on, wake up. So anyway, I said, you better ring an ambulance. So I've rang the ambulance. I said, look, he could, it was like, and then shaking. So I said, what's he had? He doesn't have no drugs as in, you know, elite, uh, uh, coke and all that. Full bottle of liquid morphine, a 500 mil, half a bottle, some pre some diazes. I couldn't do it, wouldn't make him. Gets on the phone to the ambulance, he said, look, I've been time for, feeling like it's probably three or four minutes, two minutes. I can't wake him. But you put the phone to him. You can't talk, mate. He went, no, you just, I wanted it as breathing. So I started CPR now. Can you do CPR? I went, yeah. I said, no, he went, start it now. There he went, put that back right now. Is that right next to his lips? She went, start it now. What's your name, Sean? Sean, you need to start it. And I'm working on him, mate. I'm working on him. And you're in that, like, Fuck, you just want, I, I fucking love the kid. And I'm working on him. And you, everything else is gone, and you don't care what's going on. Get the fuck! I'm shouting to his beard and Dave, uh, the other jock kid, get the fucking ambulance! And I'm working, I'm working, I'm working on him. So Dave's lying across the bed. I'm leaving over and working on him. So I'm sweating, aren't I? I'm sweating all over him. And he just goes like, like Greg. Like it's a life just drained out of him. And I'm, I'm going, no, mate, no, come on. And they're saying on the phone, Sean, you need to take a break now. I said, never mind the break. I'll do it 24 hours a fucking day. I'll be made to love him. And she went, you need to swap over. I said, no one's swapping over. So it goes to this, Dave. Give me that. Don't swipe me brow. He's lying on the bed. I've had a towel on him and a cold compress on him, trying to cool him down. And I'm going, give me that. And he goes, he grabs me hand and goes, oh, is he going? I went, what are you fucking hand, you daft cunt? I've got one, I've got one hand that's working. I went, Jay, pass me down, swipe me brow. He see him going grey. He saw us, I packed him all his hands because he was dying. And I've gone, pass me down, give me that. He went, he's not going, is he? I went, I can't even fucking hold your hand anyway. Come wipe me brow. So I'm still working on him. That was the funny part of it. So anyway, I'm working, the ambulance come. So they have the ambulance and that like little special car one, don't they? To come in, right? What's that? I said, look, he's a bare fighter and all like that. Oh, yeah, what's he had? And I've got his beard to get all the medicines. And he goes, look, well, listen, you've done well. I said, look, don't mind me. I, I want him well, mate. I want him well. So he went, right, can you all leave the room? And then one of the ambulance fellow goes, oh, I know you. Because it's only one of the hospital. I went, oh, yeah, I've got the Jimmy. And, no, I've seen him on the telly. I went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's here? I went, he's one of our fights. He went, oh, fuck is he then? What's he going to be like when he wakes up? I went, well, what would you be like, mate? If you woke up with four fucking fellas and woman standing around you? And he went, well, uh, Sean, innit? Stay here. So his bear goes out and Dave goes out and I'm standing in, like, me best, one of my best mates. Yeah. And he give him that, the general and all that. So he goes, mate, it was like the exodus. He's like, I'm going, I'm shouting, I'm, come on! And he went, shout him, I'm screaming. They give him a he wake up in a minute. He's woke, not woke up, he's like, come. And then just, just flatlined. Just flatlined. Right, step aside. And then he started him. 
So he fucking died, didn't he? So I'm I'm like all, come on. So anyway, they went, look, he needed the blue light and take, took him to the hospital. So anyway, we're outside. They've got him in. They went, look, we, we just, we, we're working on him. We, we've got to pump him, the stomach and all what he's had. We don't know what he's had. We give all the stuff to the doctor to go into what he's had. Because you can't just give something. They've got to know what stuff he's had. I'm sorry, he's going to be all right. But look, he's lucky to be here. I mean, yeah. So the ambulance fellow who said he knew me, well, knew me face, comes out and he goes, just want to shake your hand there, Sean. I said, did you enjoy it? He went, no, you've just saved your mate's life. I went, fuck off. He went, you have. He said, eh. Hey. I went, fuck off, save me mate's life. He went, <clears throat> You have. He said, only for you, he wouldn't be here. And you know what's something it's here? <laughs> Tell me thing. Why does it get you so emotional, mate? Can I be in there? Yeah. Oh, I can't shut up. I've been there. That could have been me on the bed. Could have been me when I decided to shoot myself. Could have been me when I slipped my wrist. I it hit you. And I thought, that's what my beard would be like. Well, I've, that's what I would have been like. Do you get me, James? The realisation. Yeah. It hit me then when it... And then all that just brought everything back. You know, yeah, I'd, I'd saved his life. You've done well, I went, look, he's done well, he's here. I'm, I'm not asked. People go, oh, Sean, you've done great, you've done great. I went, yeah, well, you do me. That man must people do it every fucking, every week. They're the heroes. I'm not. They're the heroes, mate. They keep us going. They fucking train us to do it. So anyone out there, go and learn fucking first aid because you never know when you need it. I never thought I'd need it to do that on my best mate who's fit as fuck, who can fight like fire, put him against anyone the best in the country, man. Look, he is one of the best. And I was like... No, this sinks in. You have a, oh, you understand? He's going, he, he's going to be all right. He was in for intensive care for two or three days. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, it brought everything back to me. Like, yeah, he was on the mend, but it, it, James, it just fucking knocked me back. And I thought, wow, what the fuck? Up in there yesterday, poor Dave was like, oh, I can't, I can't get over it. I, 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 I was going, shut up, he ain't you know. And what's like little things there where they get a little bit choked. And it was about four days, eight, cause we had to cancel a show and we was all busy then. We cancelled the show, we got another date. And then I'm just sitting in my room one night and I just, I just fucking broke down, mate. And I went, what, what fucking happened? Not because I'd, I saved me mate. And then I didn't want him in Warrington, so I rang with Johnny from Dundee, Dundee. Uh, I said, Johnny, let's come and get him. Johnny took him. Johnny took him up to Dundee and looked after him. He's a fucking big fifth. He'd he, he done brilliant. Jay Paul was running down. Jay was helping him. Everyone got round. And so everyone was running around. They're all fixing him. I'm sitting in my little room because I'm always down. We go home and I go in my room at eight o'clock or whatever. And I'm sitting there and everything just fucking hit me in the door. That could have been me. So so the way I felt a bit upset and a, a, a bit you no know, alone on my own, I thought, how oh, would my bed would have felt all them years ago if I would have done that? How would my kids feel going to school? Oh, your dad killed himself for oh, you. People don't see that, do they? Yeah, it's a sad thing, is with the mindset, it's hard to say, but the bottom line is when you take your own life, it doesn't take away your pain, it passes it on. Exactly, mate. Exactly. Your pain's gone because it's gone to all your fucking family. Your kids have got to grow up with that. Your bird, look, your bird can move on, mate. Whether your bird will grieve for five years, ten years, your bird will meet a loved one will meet someone because we're, we're human. We're not fucking robots. You'll meet someone in five, ten years, or whatever, and you might get that bit of love. Your fucking kids won't, mate. Yeah. What happened to the kid who was stabbing himself in the Vice documentary? Doing all right. He's doing, do, yeah, he's doing, doing good. good. He got a bit of jail. Cut his own ear off and that's like. Uh, Nat, doing good, brilliant boxer, and I said it on, on Max, 
I've still got his belt in my office, actually. And he's working back with his brother. Uh, he's off to drugs. He's training. I know he's doing all Good that. on him. What's the biggest debt you've ever collected? The big... Uh, the one that got me villa out of in Portugal. Look, I have my house. I have a little caravan. And I have a villa in Portugal I've had for years. Um, that was for... Four, four, two, five. I think it was four hundred twenty-five. And I got it was four hundred twenty-five. I got, I think I got once. I got one eight. I got one eighty. I got just under two hundred grand back, and I never took the, the money off the guy. I took ten grand off of my front, and he was getting on a bit. Uh, and he went, Sean, I can't. They owed me like sixty odd grand plus me ten grand off front. And we've got a lovely fella. It's way up in the mountains in Portugal. <clears throat> People know where it is. Uh, he said, Sean, I, I, I need this money. There's only him in his bed. They're fucking dead mice. I went, well, what are you going to do with the villa? He went, I'll give you my half. What's it worth? I went, go on. He said, when I snuff it, the villa's yours. If he, if he snuffs it, I have his here. If she snuffs it, I buy his here. Seeing the Vice documentary and that, what was the, the story? Did you get petrol and that put over you? Or kidnapped and... Yes. What was yes. that story, Sean? Um, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. So, we had a load of trouble and I've gone and cough for some kids and done them. Uh, just to give my leg. I haven't done him. I've done his brother. So the, the kid being shot in the leg, and it's not the right kid, it's the brother. You're getting at you, you're getting at you. So I'm working out of time. I've gone to check on the door, comes out. But all men, if you see a damn Lindsay's press or a bear crying, any decent man would go, you all right, girl? What's up? You all right? So I never used to park my dad by my door, by any venues where I went. Never always had them up the street or I'd have a van or... Anyway... I'm in the, uh, I had a red Ford tranny van then. Um, Could I just move one of my houses? So where I parked it, these people that must have been watching me and seeing me, it's fucking amazing, it's a red tranny van. There's not fucking many in the house. I'll have two or three in the morning, it's even round town. Anyway, I parked it down this, this street. And in this street, there's a doorway that goes in a couple of feet. So I've got to walk past down there, this big crying. No, no, I'm all right. I'm, you're all right, girl. And that was open. Her makeup was just... I don't know, just look. She looks like she's been crying. When, when she got a figure, I don't fucking know. She looks a mess. Went, girl, what, what's over here? No, he's coming, he's coming. I went, no one's coming. What, what's over here? You're all right? Yeah. I just started to turn. I woke up in the container. Just a steel container. And it's weird because when no one told this story years ago, I'm hearing little stories now before little people say, oh, we got thrown in the container. No, you fucking didn't. I was probably the first one to say it. Now, I've heard loads of little stories. People say they get put in containers. No, you probably didn't, mate. This is a true story, and that's on me fucking hands cross. Anyway, um, wakes up in this container. Being this over the edge, I've had a bit of gas put on me, that like gas, and I could just say, and the ram in this container. And it was a Volvo Square 240 on a, a white reds. I think it was a white reds. It was a Volvo. And, and <sighs> Sab. I can hear it in the container. Talk, what the fuck is going on here? You fucking dead. <laughs> And the shooting at the container must have been a shotty, because they weren't really coming through. Just seeing little holes. So, whoa, what the fuck? So one container door, the container door opens out. One stays in and one opens out. So the only you fuck. Containers, no lights in the fucking tent, mate. It's pitch black. It's fucking now three o'clock or quarter till in the morning. You fucking tent, he comes. But they weren't shooting me. They could have shot me anywhere. They're hitting up. 
want to go out and want to ricochet. I don't know whether they went out ricochet. I'm just hearing the noise. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck? You're fucking dead, you prick. You're fucking dead. The next minute, they've opened it. Pub. I'm going, lads, come on. What the, what the, who is it? What do you know who it is? You, you twat. We told, we told you we'd have you. Poor Petter and Litty. Well, in a container, if anyone knows, say, a container goes on fire. It fucking doesn't make the line. It's that solid fucking whatever wood's like. No, some wood you can put on it and it'll just burn it easy. It was sort of like, oh, God, whatever the floor. People who make containers are known not lying. It's that way that'll just like simmer a bit and go black. But it's fucking full of smoke. So they've lit this bit of a fire, a bit of petrol. Man, you squat. So I'm, I'm coughing, I'm like, oh. so just get on the floor. I'm running in that corner. As soon as he hit the door going, I'm running in that corner, just shooting back and just there. And what's your old? You're just in a container, there's nothing in it. I'm like, if that's the corner, it's getting wrecked. You're fucking dead. They fired. I think they fired in it twice. It might have been once and I've heard two shots. I don't know. I couldn't give all the exact details. And I thought, I'm going to fucking die here. You're dead, lad. You're going. You're going. You are gone. You, you. The fuck you think you are in that town? Blah, blah, blah. This, that, that. So they put the pets in bed too, and it's like simmering. And I don't even want to try and pull it out because they don't want to go near the door. So I thought, fuck this. So I've lay on the floor and there's a fucking big rank come and a big shot gone off. And I shit myself. I never shit myself. I pissed myself. I, I, I literally pissed myself on the floor. I thought, fuck, oh, this is it. I'm going. I'm going. I can't get out that door. They're going to open that and go, you know, but we fucked your head up a bit, poof, you're gone now. I thought, I'm going, I'm going. I thought, oh no, I'm a pissed. And then I thought, you know, when you, what's, what's he say when you have a revelation or what's that word he say? Yeah. And I went, I ain't fucking going like this on the floor. I'll, if I'm dying, I'm going to fucking die screaming. So I get by the container door, the one that's down, the one that'll open, I can pop round it. So it, it felt like ages, James. It felt, I, I don't know. It went dead quiet, and I mean quiet, mate. Quiet, quiet. Couldn't hear nothing, didn't hear. No cars pulling off. Fuck all, didn't it? No one going, we'll be back. So I'm standing there, pissed, black. I can hear. The door. Taz here the door. Hey, what's going on here? Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Fellasfield. Nothing to do with it. Here's an Al. I think it was a white red Volvo. And a Sab. There was two cars. Wait, 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 wait. Phone, phone, phone. I've got the phone. I've got the keys. My fucking lip is out here. My nose out here. My heart. I've had a kicking. Me bought, I've had a kicking. I've had shots gone in. I'm fucking full of piss. Phone, phone, phone. But I only know my office number. Because I, I don't know my bear's number. You probably don't. Everyone just goes, mobile. We're, we are robots. Mobile. You see a bit of name, you ring it. You don't remember the number, do you? But ain't fucking jail, you do, don't you? Yeah. When they give you all the numbers in jail. <laughs> and you know, if you haven't got a mobile, you can go on that jail phone and you remember every fucker's number you want to speak to. But I only ever rang me bears. I only ever rang a man that I... Anyway, I'm hitting this fella. Whoa, hey, pal, what's going on here? I went, what you doing? Well, I'll ring police. I went, don't fucking ring the police. Give me your phone, give me your phone. He gave me his phone, rang the office. The office is diverted to me, mate. I've rang me, mate, at the time. Well, I like, what's up? I went, where are you, where are you? I went, well, calm down, mate, fucking hell. Where are you? You should be well home, mate. Where, where am I? And he's going, no, I went, mate, where the fuck am I? Postcode, where am I? And it's not really, but I went, just tell me where I am. He started by come and get me now. He goes, what are you doing there, mate? You got a bed or something? I'm like, come fucking get me now. And he's turned up and seen me. And after I'd done this kid, the brother said to me, I'll get you. I said, lad, lad, look, listen. It's me and you. You was cotton for me. I was cotton for you. Your brother's ended up cotton for you in the leg. I said, look, it is what I did, mate. I said, look, I can't say I'm sorry, it's happened. Fuck yeah, it's gone. Uh, he went, oh, all right, all right, keep it like that. See you soon. 
So six, seven months ago, I think, oh, he's fucking with goggles, his ass is gone or whatever. Fucking never, mate. Come and cough for me. So he gave me six months, I gave him near two years, and I went and cough for him. I did, he was having trouble with someone, so I went and cough for him. So what about Sila? Have you ever have you ever been have you ever collected debt for any celebrities or has any celebrities ever got you to collect debts? How does it work? I'll tell you how it works, James. Celebrities. Let me tell you about celebrities. Two. One I can't name for legal reasons, but it will all be out soon. Oh well I can't name. One's a male, one's a female. The male is being an I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Very well known, really well known. I have come out with a big problem back in 2016, 2016. So he was, his son was getting terrorised. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know this guy. A friend of mine in Manchester knows him. Sean can help him out. What is it? He's having a problem with this firm. I know the firm. So we rang them up, not giving it to big bollocks. I went, lads, fucking hell, use on him. Yeah, the son owes his money. His son is a fucking raven, cokehead. The other son is famous. One's famous for doing something. One's famous for snorting fucking cocaine. Anyway, I think it's this guy. What is it? He went, he asked for me, this guy asked for me. Can you sort this? Well, I know them. What's going on? Oh, my son's gone into a bit of body. He's bodied a bit of money. Send us the paperwork over. Let me have a look. No, I went, send me the paperwork. This firm had been down to his house, down to his house, and frightened his wife. He went and asked over the police. That's why he's at me. So I sit down with these lads. I knew them. And we'd fell out years ago, but now we talk. I was like, oh, sure. I said, come on, mate, have a deal. So they, they wanted 85 grand off him. So I got it down to 35. And my deal was, I said to this guy, whatever I save you, you pay me half. Sean, that's great, that's got to go. This is all happening two days before Boxing Day. So I met them on Boxing Day, between the Boxing Day and New Year's Eve. I'm meeting them, we're having deals. I'm good enough, he went, fuck it, we'll have the deal. The door had the Andy on the grand back. This was compound incest. So they have a deal. This guy paid them the 35 grand and the lad said to me, Sean, do you want five quid? And I went, no, 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 he's paying me. Don't worry about it, he's paying me. Did a fuck, mate. That was 2016. So it goes to him. Everyone knows him. The fucking nation, the nation love him, mate. So it goes to him goes, come on, mate. It's been two or three months now. I want you to go to Dubai. I want you to go to France. I went, look, I know that. That's all well and good, but what about this money? Well, my son's going to pay you that. I went, whoa, hang on, come on. He went, no, my son will pay you. So he said, my son's had off me four million pounds in the last three years on investments. I'm pissed it up and coked up. But he's doing all right now, sure, he'll pay you. I think it's the son. What does he give me? 1,700 fucking quid, mate. I went, mean, you taking a piss? So I drove down to where he lives in this beautiful sunny place, meets the son, you know his money? Yeah, I know. I haven't got it. You're earning money off that. That buy you've got there. Look, look, I need my money. It's been three months now. Your fucking poor man was terrified. He was on the phone to me. Your dad's a fucking big celebrity. Come on, what the fuck's going on, mate? He gave me another two grand. So he had 3,700 quid out of 25. We're now up to 224. And the bill is 38,000 something. And I knew I was coming on here today, James, because last week. I sent him an email saying, um, I'm going on a podcast. People want to know who it is. I'd rather not give your name in. I'd love to give your name on this podcast and say, he is a great fella and his son had problems and he paid me what was owed. But I can't even say that in the email. I just put, I would, I'm getting pressed. I'm, I've got a new book coming out. I've got my show on the... 24th this month. When's that out. coming out? Can you show me the emails as well? Can you show me that I, stuff? I've got the emails here. Okay. I'll show you the payment. Now you if people will ask me and I'll just say it's 100%. I will show you all yeah. the emails. Okay. You, you will see the emails and the last letter I sent them saying, Mr. Blah Blah and your son, I'd done you a service in 216. You agreed to pay me X amount of money. You only give me that. 
you've you already put a cease and desist, desist and desist on me to sue me. But now I've had enough, mate. You're a multi fucking millionaire, and 38 grand to you is nothing. He probably goes out on a Sunday dinner, takes all his family out, and if you stay up in the night, that'll probably cost him 15 grand. He owes me 38, and he's got it. And they basically fuck off you on our job. If, like, I'm just a little nobody, if I'm a little scally from Liverpool, well, I'm not a fucking a little dibby scally. I want me fucking money. And I know it's been since 2016, but I want me money. Are you going to expose him in your book? Yes. Does he know this? Yes. What I turned around and said is, I couldn't say I will expose you, because that's blackmail. So all the so how, that, do you, how do you go about that, Sean, without crossing the line of you getting Without back? crossing the line, here's how you do it. So I've... I basically said to him, this Monday gone, it's now Saturday. Saturday. So Monday gone, sent an email from the office. I have a solicitor working for me saying, hi, Mr. Blah, blah. Uh, our client, Sean Smith, is on a podcast on Saturday, the whatever date, and he's also got a new book coming up next year. He's getting pressed off his agent to name you and your son. Uh, Sean doesn't want to name anyone. You know you'd had a bill outstanding up to this date of £30,000. Sean would like to go on this podcast and mention you and your son in a good way and say, you've had fell out and you've honoured all your debt, you've honoured your, you're honored your words and your pays and you are good stand-up people. That's not asking for the money. I've said how much he owed me. I said I'd like to come on and mention them. So I thought I'd get an email before today, they never. So now fuck them. So the reason why I'm doing this, this will get out. I hope you can hear this bit. Let one of the papers come to me. I'll show you the emails when you go so you can mm. say it is true. Let one of the journalists come to me and buy it off me. I'll get money that way. Fuck them. I really want to sue me. Sue me. What's the worst thing about being a debt collector? Getting laid with a bully. Look, everyone has this thing that, oh, you're the debt collector going around people's houses. I don't take your car, mate. I don't take your couch and your fridge and... I don't, I'm doing genuine debts. I'm trying to. I will take nothing if it's word to word. I've got to have a paper trail. Who was the guy in the documentary? There's something no money, but gets fucking ass ripped right out him. And there was photos of him just to say, look, if you don't pay, we're giving you yes. these photos. What was that? A fella gets thrown over a table. He gets raped. They take photos of him. This guy could have a go. This guy could have a fight. This guy would do that to you if he was owed money. These guys have gone on a debt. I've been in the area. He hasn't paid. They've done him in. They've thrown him over the table. They've flora or butter. Put it on him. Put it on his own fingers. Done him. Took pictures. He got the money three days later. But it's the old Polaroids that you take. Six months after, the poor comes hung himself. So yet they got the money. And yet, People laughed about it after, yeah, he paid, he paid. But years ago, it was a Polaroid. I know you can have a film and hide it. They give him one and said they had another one. And he paid. He was supposed to give that pity back. And he never. So, the sad thing about it. Yeah. Plans for the future, Sean. Look, you've lived a mad fucking life. But you're looking better. You're actually looking better than you were in the documentary yeah, in about good. seven, good. eight years ago, whenever good. it was. Like, you're looking good. Is that because I'm paying for your fucking dinner? After? Possibly, <laughs> mate. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the plans yeah. for the future? Yeah. Where do you I go? I want one more okay. celeb. Celeb. People say a wolf in sheep's clothes. And yeah. <laughs> this one, who's a beard, she is a... I can't. The Wicked Witch of the West. Uh, Dracula's eldest daughter. I don't know a bit in sheep's clothing. This fucking woman is very well known, celeb. I won't, I won't even go say where from because everyone will know where. She's on this, she's on TV. And you know what? Yes, she's a bit of a. It's got to be taken care of her, like. Yes, <laughs> yes, because I'm going to. Fuck, this comes up as well. Because hey, fella come to see me. This is how people see this girl as being dead nice. Hey, fella come to see me. He just had a baby to her. And she had kids with another fella. 
and she didn't want the ex-husband coming round and taking the kids away from the new baby. She just didn't like it. So she offered me 10 grand to break his legs. So her fellas meet me and I went, no, nah, mate, come on, for fuck's sake. She's a fucking celeb, she's famous, everyone knows him. I know, yeah, but he's coming around, picking the kids up and he's kicking off. And it's upsetting the kids and we've got this new baby on the old big I went, hang on, do you want to do it or does she want to do it? She wants to do it. And I went, well, I need to hear it off here. Yeah, but she's not coming to speak to you. She can't, you know, she's celeb and all that. I went, well, I'm not fucking doing it. I said, because, I said, okay. What if I do the job and get him done in, break his legs, and give him a bit of an eye? I'll get that done all day. No, I want you to do it. I know you'll do it. I went, mate, 10 grand's not enough for me. I wouldn't do no one for 10 grand. Them days are gone. I'm 50, well, this is, I'm 57 now, so this was, I don't know, 50, 53 or so, 54, 54. I went, 10 grand, five grand up front, five grand when it's done. I've got the kids, I'm ready to go. But I need to hear it off here. Because what, if he gets done in, then you and I are pissed up, you tell her you got it done, she gets you nicked and gets me nicked. So I need to hear it off here. But she won't speak, I went, my ringer on your phone. So when I met in a well-known place in where I live, I said, there's your phones, put our phones over there. I knew the manager in this place. I said, make sure I'm on the video. And I've kept a little phone on me here. Because what if they set me up? This girl's quite fucking famous. Well, she is famous, isn't she? She's famous. I thought, you fucking bitch. I thought, it's a job. Uh, and these kids will do it. So I would get it, get it on the phone. He went, I'll get it on this one. I bought a beer in it. I went, whatever you call it, mate, fucking ring it. So he's ringing them and go, hi, girl, how are you? I said, hi, yeah, you all right? I went, yeah. Do you want this job doing? She went, yeah, he's coming Wednesday. I said, okay. So Monday morning, he gave me five grand. Wednesday, the get us kicking. Give it a couple of weeks after that, and you give me the other five, I'll pay the kids for the job. Yeah, she went, oh, that's great. I went, but who am I speaking to? She said, it's me, went, well, who's me? I said, look, girl, I'm not being funny. Your fella's sitting next to me. You could be the fucking girl I've just seen going in the toilets over there. You could be anyone. I She went, oh, Sean, you know it's... I went, yeah, but how do I know it's you? She went, you know it's me because I was in. I went, yeah, all right, all right, girl, all right. She went, no, honest, it's me. I said, no, went, all right, girl, all right, all right. Now, I'm not speaking on it, we're speaking on speaker. Could he's put him with the tubers and over the, the chair like that? And I've got my, my little phone here. And I recorded it. He died. And I see that twat on telly. There every other day, mate, playing the victim. And it fucking grigs me, mate. It proper grigs me. I think, you know what? People don't know you. You're crying. It fucking boils me blood. You're crying, you're this, you're that. You fell died a couple of years ago. You've moved on, you got more. You fucking horrible. You wanted your next fella to him breaking his legs. And look here, playing the victim. I hate phony people, mate. I just hate it. So I thought, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. I want people to know the truth about you. It's not grassing. You're a fucking phony. And people look up to her. Kids look up to her. I, my daughter knows who this girl is. And I've gone, no, baby. She don't got it. She don't got it. I don't want other kids thinking, oh, we see this. I want them to see the real fucking side of it. Whether that's a woman's... The woman's scorn. I've heard of a woman's scorn. You're bare kicking off, you know, that shit. But that's, that's getting your fucking done it, mate. So we can't see his kids. I said, well, what if it doesn't work? She said, well, just do it again. So people used to pay you as well to weigh people in? It wasn't just a case of collecting debts? Mate, listen, listen. What's the worst thing anybody's ever says? People. To do? Or try to get you to do? People will say, he... loads of people pay people to give someone a smack or someone a crack. I had a business fellow come in my office one day, mate. Gospel truth. He had a big fucking IT company. Me and the half fellas that works for me sitting in the office. My office is, Mandel will tell you this. I'm sitting in my office. This fellow is, hi, it's a picture Sean. Dead nice, dead nice. About 54. There's a funny side of this. About 54. Yeah, and he's come to see him having a couple of problems. I went, money, 
It's all documented. Yeah, everything's documented. So he comes in with a suit, a little briefcase, IT fella, loaded. Uh, Sean, what is this? He said, here, the wife. I said, OK, you went here. I got a load of carpet fitted in my house. I said, what's your company? <laughs> she knows the story. What's your company called? So I went, look, I don't know the fuck you are, mate. So while I'm speaking to you, him over there is going to check on you, out of your arm. So me mate in the office is checking out. He went, yeah, it's him. Yeah, it's the, yeah. Where do you live? Is your house? Check the house. His house is like 680 grand. So he's got that. I said, OK, what is it? Well, what happens, Sean? He said, here, yeah, I'm having a refurb on the house. And we're having carpets all upstairs. All stairs land, but all the rooms by the wet room. Fuck where he lives is nice. He said in there, my wife started up and the carpet fell back in there every other week, saying there's something up with the carpet, needs fixed. I went, what do you mean? I said, come on, mate, when your carpet's fitted, it's fitted. You might, it can't be short and cut. He went, she just said there was all the problems. I found out, Sean, she's having sexual intercourse with this guy. And I went, you not in your bed. He went, well, you fucking shafting it, Sean, shafting it. So I'm like, <laughs> all right, so who's the guy? He said, well, I don't know, but I've got his van and it's, it's only got his number on it. Do you know where he lives? No. He said, look, I, I, I'm really trying to save me marriage. She'll want me gone. I don't want to go. Our kids, is, I've only just gone to uni and I don't want it to be kids, you know, mum and dad splitting up and all that. I don't care what it costs to angle, mate. It's not about money. It, 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 I need to know where you want to go with this. It, it, look, if you want to get, if you want to get him warned off, then you can get it. Get him warned off, not a problem. I can send the message. No, I want him thumping. So he's just an old my guy. Not like I want to set. I went. So you just, you want him thump? I went. Give me the number. Give me the guy's name. Leave a grand. Send me a grand over. Let me do my little investigations, and I'll get back to you. You want him his hand with you? I said no. I said. Come and see me in a week. So say you come on a Tuesday, James. She's coming the following Tuesday. I find out who this fella is. I've gone up and seen his business. Bumf! He's a screw. The shag in his wife. From Risley. I only know his face. I don't know his name. I thought, that's fucking Mr. Blah Blah, huh? Nah. Fucking hell it is. And he's shagging this fella's wife. <laughs> so I'm like, fucking this gets. So anyway, he comes back and he's like, it's just changed. It's demeanor. Right, John, I've had enough. And uh, I beat it. I said, look, just... No, I went, just look. Just, let me tell you what I know. The fellow who's banging... Sean, I, I don't... The fellow who's meeting your bed. They never go out. It's always in the house and he's always fixing the carpet. He was there, Sean. You know, uh, through the week. Near three hours. I said, well, just think what he's been doing to your bed, mate. He went, well, that's it, that's it. He, he went, what is gone? I said, look. I don't know, but I know he is. He's a screw. He was, he, he was a screw. He's not now. I think just a strong word and just give him a little strangle so he goes purple and the face is up. And that'll do him. I'll fuck him off. No, she loves him. She told me she loves him. And we're getting divorced. And she wants half the house and half of me business. I want it gone. I said, mate, I'm not throwing your bed out of no house. I, you, he went, no, I want it gone, Sean. So I was, hang on, mate. Hang on, hang on. I know I've done it before. Stand up. What, Sean? I went, fucking stand up. Have you got a fucking record? And he said to me, I went, mate, where are you getting this gum from? He went, you can do it. I want to throw in, she's laughing. <laughs> I want to throw in the back of her boot. I don't care what you do to her. If you want to, if you want to do whatever you want to her, Sean, what he's been to, and bury the bastard. I said, listen, mate, if you've been watching fucking Casino or a gangster, and where they bury him, what's that one where they bury him in the end? Casino. Casino. Yeah. I said, mate, you're reading too many books. I'm watching right. too, too much too many events. I want it gone. And he's banging on me table. I don't care. I'm I'm not asked over the house to buy a house. And my kids going to fuck my kids. I'm not asked about my money for my business. Well, I am, but I've, I've still got a couple of million. She'll fuck my kids' heads up. I said, Sure, you can do it. I went, no, I can't do it, mate. I won't do it. 
Well, do you know anyone who'll take the job on? I went, no, mate. You're not going to get no one to go and get your beard. And basically, Andrew went, I want to hear fucking dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> Lying face down in the dirt. to it. Mate, look, you need to fucking go, mate. Were you ever surprised at how far people would go? You think some mate. fucking frail old man just willing to mate, put out it, his missus? Not really like he's watching Goodfellas too much. He, he, he did books, watch Goodfellas, but a gangster movie. He's probably seen a documentary about me. Come and see me. And now his wife said to him, oh, I love him. I love him. I don't want to be with you. But he did look. You know what he looked like? Rigsby off Rising Damp. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, mate? I don't know what your wife looks like, but if I was a woman, I wouldn't fucking go on <laughs> I'm saying that to myself. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. I can probably understand, you know what I mean? I've had that. I had another fella just quickly, because I know we're going. I had another guy ringing up. Yeah, that's the one I, <laughs> I had a guy, uh, uh, an airline pilot, uh, Indian guy, airline pilot, being lived off, loads of money, he found out where they lived. He said, John, I want you to go fuck him, with the ass. <laughs> I said, I'll take him. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, when I met him in the airport, a pilot, pilot. Fella, in the I've got loads of Indian friends, Muslim friends. So he he went, you come meet me, cause he had a he had a uh, you know when you swap your flight, it's a uh, you land and you go fly somewhere else. I forget what they call it. I forget the come here, I'm thick. Uh, so he went, Sean, I've got like a two hour window coming with me. So when I met him at the airport, I'm sitting there with this airline party. He said, Sean, I want you to fuck him up the ass. I went, mate, if I can fuck him, if I can get your money, with no, Sean, I want you to fuck him up this taxi. I went, what? And he's, he's a, look, I know they're just normal people. He's, but he's a pilot. He's got 500 people he's got to go and look after. I went, hang on, let, let me, let me, I, I pay, look, I pay you. Fuck the money. I want to fuck right up the ass, you right up the taxi. Because he will be banished. I will tell everyone he's been fucked up the taxi and no one will want to bother them. I went, mate, you got the wrong fella. What I know you'll do it for money, I went. You know what, mate? You can't put a price on everything. You're talking to the wrong person. But can you get me someone? So what I'm thinking now, James, I've met you. Do you want his number? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, geezer. <laughs> Obviously, you've met some characters and had some oh, requests over the years. Yeah. Where do you go forward for the future, Shawnee boy? Uh, now... Yeah, I want to be in Portugal in two years. As I just say, we've got a show on the 24th, it's got the boot coming out. Uh, I'll see what comes back of that. Them two celebrities. Um, my daughter goes into high school this year. I want to get her over before she has stayed here to Portugal. I'll be in a villa. Uh, we've got a little business. My friend's got a business over there, the cleaning business. Uh, what I manage now, she's doing well. And I'll do a bit of scorty work over there. Person scorty. What do you think looking back in your life? But don't get me wrong. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change anything. I, I would like to change all the trouble. Yeah, because I wear my shit, mate. I wear my shit. Uh, but man, well, um, I stood up for what I believed in. Uh, I've had loads of fights in town. I've had statements with people. A lot of door firms I don't think there's any door in here that will give me a bad name. I've never been a bully, and I've, I've had I've had an incest in life, but uh, mentally can fuck your head up. Since I've come off my medication, and it took me eight, 18, six, people say, oh, I'll just come off your meds, and you can't, mate, you can't. I, mate, I could tell you loads of stories, be having a good time. Um, get off your medication. And it's not about hitting the gym, go for a walk, go and have a swim, buy a dog, go and speak to a friend. Let it out. Look at me. I, I'd never thought I'd get a, a bit choked or... Uh, I tell people it's, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Look at Tyson Fury shouting out the other week. Melt and help, behave yourself, grow up here. What does the tablet do? It's like that curtain there. You take the tablet, it pulls it over for a few hours, you'll have a sleep. You wake up, your problem's still there. Get rid of the tablet. Be a bit more focused. How important is training and exercise for mental health? I've got to train every day, mate. I've, I've, but look, some people can't train. Go for a walk every day. Go on a bike ride. I have got to get up every day and train. Every morning. Then Tuesday night, Thursday night. Saturday morning I have a class. Sunday I have a fall. I'll do a class Sunday and have Saturday off. I have a don't train. I've got mental, don't I? I've got to train. Otherwise, you can put up with me. 
for anybody watching, Sean, it's in the struggle the now with mental health. You've clearly spoke about it for many years now. You seem to have come through the other end of it. You are looking a fucking brilliant, by the way. But anybody that's in that struggle the now, that fucking deep struggle where they don't think there's an out, thinking about taking their own life, you've been there. What advice would you have for them? Just believe in yourself. Get off the medication. Try and get off the medication. And believe in yourself. There's always people around you. Like people say they're on their own. It's like people being suicidal. All you do is passing all that grief onto someone else. Go and have a... I don't mean... I, I, I was in the jail, I'd be Samaritan's card. Go and have a good, long conversation with yourself in the mirror. Honest. It sounds stupid. Go and get a chair, put a mirror there, look at yourself, and speak to yourself and think, what, what are you doing? Do I really want to look at me? You're better. You're unshaven, you're dirty, you're having net, you're having slept, you're having trained, you're having swam, you're having walked the dog, you're having... Play with the kids. Just be honest with yourself. And if you can't, tell one of your mates. Because someone will help you. It happened to me. I only found that with her. If I wouldn't have had her mates, I wouldn't be here. And that's the gospel truth. How important is it to have a good woman that doesn't leave your sight when you're fucking an absolute loose well, cannon? I don't want to going any fucking big. <laughs> Look, they say behind every man is a good woman. And I'm not kissing her ass. I, I do think... I, 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 I have got one of the best, if not the best. Without her, look, without her, I just wouldn't be here. Yeah. Gee, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit down and tell people my problems or where I'm high, where I'm low. She knows I can be watching something on TV. I'll get upset. She goes, babe, just go in your room. Uh, silly things get me upset. and the, She knows me. So it's not good being on your own, suffering in silence. Share it. Share yeah. it. Someone will help you. Yeah, it's important. There's always something there, maybe besides medicine. Shawnee boy, listen for coming on today and telling your story. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Pleasure, mate. Watch your stuff for Pleasure. years. Would you Pleasure. like to finish up on anything? I'll give that guy your number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing as if I don't want it, but give me a. <laughs> Cheers, I'm good. Cheers. You.